We know there are many choices in Internet radio and the staff and host of L.A. Talk Live would like to thank you for choosing the Internet's hottest destination for the most eclectic sound and invigorating talk. This is L.A. Talk Live. We are more than just talk. Joshua Lane, member of the board of directors of Dr. Anne Wigmore's Hippocrates Health Institute, Josh Lane was part of the Dr. Anne Wigmore team that brought wheatgrass, sprouts, and raw foods to a worldwide audience. And now the host of Here's to Your Health on LA Talk Live, Joshua Lane. <laughs> We're back. Thank you for tuning in to this edition of Here's to Your Health on the LA Talk Live broadcast network. I'm your host, Joshua Lane. The Natural Foods Expo at Anaheim just finished this weekend. It was a monster success. I believe the traffic was up more than 25% from last year when it was very busy. And uh, Thomas Greither, owner of Castle Rock Spring Water, bottled at the source in Mount Shasta, California, is our guest. And uh, Thomas's uh, Castle Rock Spring Water just won Best Tasting Spring Water, or Best Tasting Water Worldwide. Thomas, welcome to Here's to Your Health. Hello, Josh. Um, thank you for having me on the show. So what did you just win? Let's, let me get it exactly correctly. We won the Berkeley Springs International Water Competition about 100 plus companies take part in this competition, and we won best bottled water in the world for 2014. Now I drink your water. Thank you. Thank you. I drink your Thank water, you. and uh, I think it has really a lovely taste. It's a remarkably good spring water, and people who try different waters know that different waters give you different taste. Uh, now, what's the history of the Castle Rock uh, Spring in in Manchester? It started in 1889, and there was 1889. Uh, yes, that's correct. And there was the, on the built the railway at this time from basically from Los Angeles, San Francisco to Seattle and Portland, and it has to go through this gorge, the Sacramento Canyon, uh, Cantera Loop, and they had to build the railway through there. And as they built the railway, they discovered this whole hill full of springs. And so that's you know, so fantastic, and they tried the water, so it's fantastic. So they decided to make it a stop and to make it a tourist attraction. So they brought every train which went north-south for about 40, 40 to about 1930, almost 45 years, stopped at these springs. And it became so popular after a few years that they actually built a whole resort there. And then Theodore Roosevelt uh, came there, had uh, spent vacations there. Uh, Alexander Bell and his wife and his family spent vacations there. And actually the late uh, um, Shirley Temple, as a child, she spent regularly their vacation months in the summer at that resort. So every train stopped for about 15, 20 minutes. People rushed out, tasted the water, and bought the water and brought it back, and the train went on. And it became quite a huge development. They even had... The, this from the canyon up to the plateau on top where the resort was, they had like a water elevator, which went right up. And uh, so it wasn't driven with electricity, but with water pressure because so much oh, water kidding. pressure came out of uh, out of the mountain. So it was became one of the, Shasta Water became one of the biggest water companies really in the United States. It was sold at all the famous hotels, uh, Wall of Astoria, the, uh, the Ritz in New York, ah. everywhere it was sold. And uh, had it during the whole train travel was its high high time. And then it came to the 20s and um, the recession and things went down. And then of course they built I-5 and people started to travel by car. And it was a decline of this resort. And the resort basically closed down in the 1949-1950. was sold to a Christian spiritual organization who used it as a summer camp. Uh, but the same springs were still deeded also to the city of Dunsmuir, a small little tiny town. And they have actually the rights to the water. And our water, Castle Rock Water, is basically a joint venture between the city of Dunsmuir and the, and the non-profit. So it's basically a community-based business. And we are the marketing arm, and the money goes back into the community. Even the building itself was an old, dilapidated building about, uh, yeah. 
15 years it was sitting empty and we basically renting it from the city we uh, we fixed this back up and it sits right about 200 yards downstream from the springs and we is piping it in by gravity goes right into the facility now by, we, gravity. by gravity well that seems very uh ecological doesn't it yes it's uh, all by as nature intended we don't do anything to the springs it's uh, it comes from a huge cave a couple of caves and uh, the caves are totally sealed up with two stainless steel doors and out of the cracks of the wall is where the water comes out and it's at least a hundred years old when it comes out of the mountain so they say anything from carbon dating from 100 to 10,000 years and the facility sits about at 3,000 feet so we know from the oxygen isotopes which are produced by glaciers we know that the water comes from about 7,000 foot level so you're talking not only is the water old, but the glaciers, before it comes actually down and melts through, it can it's literally thousands of years old before it comes out. Okay. Because the Castle Rock spring water really has a great taste. I mean, when people try it, they think, oh my goodness, this really does taste like different kinds of water. I mean, water tastes different, and this really tastes uh, very good. And how did you discover the spring initially? Well, I found out about the story. Uh, I had a, I love this area. Mount Shasta, it's basically one of the biggest volcano on the, uh, in North America, huh? a landmass, right? Not the tallest, a few hundred feet short of the tallest, but uh, it's the la biggest landmass and it has seven glaciers. And interesting enough, Mount Shasta is one of the few mountains in the world where the glaciers are actually growing. And it actually, uh, they have doubled in the last 30 years, which is really interesting. So I had always had a cabin up there and enjoyed the purity of nature and uh, spent the kids growing up there. and. So I knew about the circumstance of the swells and I thought, boy, it wouldn't be nice to actually bring this water out. And then one day I knew the mayor from uh, Dunsmuir and they called me up and said, Thomas, we, we don't want to sell you anything, but are you interested to do a community-based project? And I said, I would love to. And so I uh, renting the building and I started it and we, we put in a $5 million FDA-approved bottling plant in this facility and uh, since I'm a big glass person, I think I always, I'm very disturbed when I have a bottle of water in my car and it sits for half an hour in the sunshine and gets very hot in the car and it tastes like plastic and it's yeah. certainly, certainly it's not something you want to have in your body. So in fact, right. glass would be a lot better thing and you can, glass is easy to recycle. It doesn't take 10,000 years to decompose. So it's a, a lot better way you can, so we decided to make uh, water in glass bottles, which actually uses 55% recycled glass. Great. Great. And, of course, it's a, it's a California water. Now, so this is Castle Rock, you put this together. Now, is it true that your grandfather started the company Flora in Germany in 1917? Yes. Uh, well… Uh, not Flora, but he started Salus House. Salus. It's his Flora Dix is kind of the trade name of his uh, company. He, my grandfather, started in 1916, and he was quite. Uh, he was a veterinarian, uh, a dentist, and a, a medical doctor. That's, so that's he, quite a combo. Yes, he was like really into medicine, and it was uh, the modern medicine at this time. And then he one day he got sick and uh, you're talking he was already in his late 50s and he had a toxic buildup in his leg it turned turned black and all his doctor friends every said you have a you gotta amputate this leg otherwise you're gonna die so he said wow <laughs> I better uh, better do something about it I don't want to die so he went into the hospital and the night before the amputation a nurse in the station said you know Dr. Kreider you don't need to lose your leg. All you need is an enema. I said, an enema? I mean, come on. Right. <laughs> an enema. So <laughs> he said, well, I have nothing to lose but my leg, so let's do it. So he did the enema, and sure enough, a few hours later, he was already better. By the time morning came around, he didn't need to amputate the leg anymore. That's, so he said that's it was quite just, outrageous. That's outrageous. What's remarkable. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, it, it was So amazing. it's like an early idea of what we use today, we might call to use the word toxemia. Is that it? Uh, exactly. Right. Exactly. Yeah, it's basically a toxic. You know, at that time, you know, they took drugs where, you know, 
they didn't know side effects of drugs, so they were used to much higher quantities as they are now, uh, for, uh, really? for example. Yeah, so the build-ups happen a lot easier. So half a year later, he developed the whole disease again. So he went to his doctor's friends, and they all analyzed and thought, boy, what can we do? But it got worse and worse and worse. So he, they said, we have to amputate, you got to amputate the legs, otherwise you're going to die. So he went back to that nurse, and the nurse said, well, let's take the animal again. And he sure enough got better. There was such a life-changing experience to my da- uh, my grandfather that he became a vegetarian, and he studied why this toxic buildup ha- happened, and he developed his, his slogan was that death sits in the colon. And in the colon, uh, as you know, there's little microvillis inside. They're like little fingers, mm-hmm. and they absorb your food. And each each little microvilli is responsible to absorbing all the nutrients. So the nutrients come through this the so your small intestine. And uh, if you eat a lot of heavy foods, fatty foods, meats, and so on and so forth, after years and years of eating them, these microvilli gets clogged up. And after at the end, there's only, and also we eat a lot of white flour products, you know, all refined foods, and all of a sudden your column is really heavily clogged up, and only the tips are absorbing nutrients, and that's why people have to do make a dose as vitamin, because the tips are the only ones who are really <laughs> absorbing any kind of nutrients. So he said, well... He realized that to the anima, actually these, these, these sludge, so to speak, in your column, it was loosened up and it was just came right out to the anima. So he, just, he realized that you need, we were lacking fiber, meat and potato. Now Germany was a heavy meat and potato in 1917 and and uh, everybody eats lots of meat. Meat was, you know, if you had meat, you were wealthy, basically. Right. You know, so that's that's and white flour products, white bread, bakeries in Germany, very famous. So everything was white flour. So he realized that this stuff was like killing us. You know, so he started a uh, whole um, clinic and a, a, a hospital and uh, also a, cu- a, a, a cure, a place where like a hotel where people mm-hmm. come on a lake where they uh, get cured. So he had people coming there and curing them left, right and center from cancer, from some heavy diseases just by simply giving them caster seed oil. <laughs> and caster seed oil, you know, <laughs> yeah. it cleanses the bowel, has an instant reaction. So it was always when I got sick as a young boy, my dad gave me a spoon <laughs> of caster seed oil. And you know what happens? You don't get off the bathroom <laughs> for the next few hours, but it cleanses you out and you really feel a lot better. Everything bad in your body gets gets out of your body. I, you know, when people, when we talk about, you know, bowel cleansing, you know, it's always a a topic. There's some levity involved. People think, "Oh, this is hilarious," you know. It's it's, and and people who don't know the subject think, "Oh no, they're they're making a joke. Those guys are teasing." And yeah. no, we're not teasing. And when you cleanse the bowel, you realize you feel better. And the theory is, if you eat three times a day, you want to move your bowels two or three times a day. And some people, when they hear that, they're kind of shocked because they think, "No, no, no, I move my bowel every other day." And I've been to the physician, and the physician says, "No, no, that's perfectly uh, fine. It's perfectly average, but it's not healthy." And if you eat three times a day and you move your bowels three times a day, you realize. You feel much better. Oh, much better, much yeah. lighter. You know, I met yeah, my I wife. When I met my wife. She only could poo once a week. Oh dear. <laughs> and so I oh, put dear. her on a nice health food diet, and you know, it was amazing. Just introducing whole foods right. and a lot of more salads and vegetables, and all of a sudden she has no problem anymore. Right. You know. Yeah, and uh, one of the uh, important teachers uh, uh, of, my, of our generation, Bernard Jensen, That's who was right. very influential uh, in the study of iridology. Uh, Jensen, I'm repeating this from Jensen. Jensen says bowels are central to good health. And that's a very succinct way to put it. And Bernard Jensen is uh, very respected because he influenced a lot of people with his intelligent advice. Yes, and he was really, it took these type of, personalities really get it across to people that it's it's not a choke if you want to live long you have to introduce fibers to your body because fibers act like a you know a crude comparison but like a toilet brush you know the brushing off right. uh, all these microbilli in your small intestines right. test and that's actually physically what's happening and you know? so the parastalgic action of your column it gets really massages through and takes off all these sludge out of your column so it's a really important thing and it's easy to fix, you know? It's easy to fix. Yeah. It's cost effective. And uh, I mentioned, you know, your grandfather with his uh, ideas of what he called nature cure and his clinics, and he was an MD. 
because some people think that nutrition somehow started in California in the 1960s. They don't realize there's always been a wellness contingent who've had some influence, although I think now we have much more influence. That's true. It's really becoming mainstream. And, you know, my grandfather, be changing as a doctor to a natural medicine man was groundbreaking. Mm -hmm. He became the most hated doctor in Germany. He started the first health food store in the world in Germany. And actually, when he passed on, uh, he had like 45 health food stores. No kidding. <laughs> oh, wow. It was a whole chain just in health stores, like a natural type pharmacies. Right. Okay? And uh, there became such a advocate for changing people's diet said you know when he passed on they wanted to take that wanted to take away his doctor title and the whole medical association went after him and he actually passed on it was about 68 or so he passed on oh, pretty young and pretty young actually because he did a lot of x-rays and he tried to study oh, right. what happened inside he the column know. how the food moves right. and had no protection whatsoever and that's how he passed on fairly young right. but he never found out that they actually uh, took away his doctor title it was like two hours later when the registered letter came to my grandmother and they took his title away <laughs> Here's an interesting story from the same era as your grandfather. Mm. Uh, they, uh, when the dentists in the early part of the 20th century began to use x-rays, it was a very good diagnostic tool, and they didn't realize the downside. So every time you had an x-ray taken, the dentist would actually hold the plate when they took a picture. And I knew of a dentist who had graduated from NYU School of Dentistry, uh, of, I, th I think in 1912. Uh, I knew him years ago in the 1970s. And unfortunately, what happened to many of the men, they died of cancer. And this particular dentist who I knew, his digits, his fingers, had turned black, and several of them had actually fallen off. Wow. From Because they didn't know, and they, the dentist himself literally held the x-ray that they took of your teeth. And it's interesting, the mistakes that people make and how they rectified but how there's so much suffering sometimes involved with these uh, medical errors. Yes, yes. It's amazing, yeah. Yeah, so on, on your granddad with the Flora products, the Salus products in Germany, so when did he manufacture the liquid iron, the Floridex liquid iron, which is still a very popular product? My my grandfather really had a different herbal tea combination for cleansing the columns, and castor seed oil was really one of his remedies. Uh, my father, uh, he was just, when the war finished, 17, his, the whole company was gone, was all bombed out, uh, was all gone. And my grandmother, really, was an interesting story that she actually passed on just in the last few months of the war. And my father, being all young kids, were basically gunpowder sent to Russia to fight the war. And, you know, people knew they would never come back. But because my grandmother died, his mother died, he was allowed to come back home. And as soon as we came home, he was captured by the Americans, thank God. And Safe. the war was over for him. And uh, he was saved. His life was spared. The same as with his brother, you know. Wow. Yeah. And when did they start manufacturing the Florida? So my, my father went back. He want, wanted to get back into medical school. And he kept on doing it at night school. And he started to build up the company and build up the teas again, making teas. and Herbal uh, teas. Herbal teas uh, for column cleansing for different ailments. And started to build it up. And he discovered uh, uh, that herbs in combination, when you, when you feed vitamins to yeast – that they actually uh, make the the, uh, the vitamin becomes like a natural compound, an organic compound. It's much better absorbed by that the body. That was your father's discovery? That's right. That's oh, my goodness. In the early that's days. pretty big now, isn't it? Uh, it's everywhere. Oh, right my now. goodness. Yeah. We were oh, pioneers God. at this time. Boy, that's a very nice thing you yeah. did. Your dad's yeah. an MD? No, he's a self-made man, and uh, really he had to stop medical school because the business took all of his attention. You know, But he did it. He developed it. And uh, 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 that's that's how the company started. And oh he goodness. hired a, a gentleman, a Sikh from India, who helped him. So a lot of Ayurvedic influence came into the formulations, which my father really produced in the late 50s. Uh, and Floridex continues to be a very popular uh, product. And it is the uh, most important product, really, for uh, pregnant uh, women, because iron tablets constipate were... Uh, Floridex does not constipate. That's why doctors love it because it's uh, you can take your iron. You get the, it's all based on different herbs. Uh, it's organically based iron, and then basically it doesn't constipate, which is such an important thing for pregnant women. 
And again, let me have this once again. Your father thought of the concept of feeding nutrients to probiotics, to marrying the two, and getting better absorption. That's correct. And where did he come up with that? I think he worked together with another German doctor and a sort of uh, think tank uh, in the early days to develop uh, this type of concepts. Wow. Well, that, I tell you, that's, 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 I'm happy to hear that. Now, by the way, as far as adding things to wellness, is it true that you developed the first flaxseed oil in the United States? Is that your addition to the literature? That's uh, that's my claim to fame, I suppose. And uh, when I came to the United States in 1979, I went to the University of Vermont, and I went actually also to medical school. And I realized that uh, you know medical school didn't really teach you, <laughs> didn't teach you how to stay uh, uh, healthy. It just fixed fixed the symptoms. Right. So so I actually switched into human nutrition and foods and got a degree in human nutrition and foods from University of Vermont. And then I studied ancient food habits in the Himalayas uh, and also became a vegetarian and really studied my grandfather's, uh, what he learned about the column and I saw that the oil component is so important mm -hmm. and, and discovered flaxseed oil really from a study which Dr. Budwig, a lady in Germany in the oh, 50s yeah. uh, Joanna did. Budwig? Joanna Budwig, yeah. And I still, uh, I know her pers uh, personally. And uh, so that inspired me to bring flaxseed. And when I, after my university, I started a health food store in Vermont, Healthy Living. It's now the biggest health food store in Vermont. And, and I t pressed flaxseed oil in my health food store. Actually, in the beginning, we called it linseed oil. And everybody thought linseed was paint. So right. I thought, well, I have to do something. I have to we discover, <laughs> resurrected the name flaxseed. And, and flaxseed, we uh, sort of trademarked it because now it's a, everybody knows what flaxseed oil is. But we'd use that just to get away from the uh, from linseed because everybody thought it was paint. And then we, I started, after three years, I sold my house for store to the current owners who made it so big, Katie. And uh, I started to produce flaxseed oil, and be, thank God, it became a great, a great business. Because um, people, mm. they like the way it tastes. It, it tastes greater on like a baked potato or brown rice, but what's the value of flaxseed oil? Flaxseed oil is basically the omega-3 fatty acids. It's basically a vegetarian version of fish oil. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, the fish basically eat algaes, and they get the DHA and EPA and omega-3s from the algae. so why not go directly to the algaes and the plants? And uh, uh, flaxseed has been very rich in omega-3s, and we developed now seven sources, a new oil, which is rich, and you can buy it in all the health food stores, and it's rich in omega-3s, uh, balanced omega-3, omega-6, and omega-9s, and also has the EPA and DHA from algae. So it's a complete vegetarian source, so it's a sustainable source, it's all organic, and it's uh, much, much cheaper than fish oil. And, you know, the oceans, 90% of the oceans have uh, depleted of fish, there's less than 10% left, so it's going to come home. We can't keep on taking the fish out uh, and not think sustainably in a sustainable way to, to bring it back. So that's why I thought it was very important to have a sustainable alternative to fish oil. And which so is yours is the flora? Flora, flax. seven sources, uh, omega-3, omega-6. That's uh, your new product. That's our new product. And you also have another product, the flora flaxseed oil. Flaxseed oil is just plain flaxseed oil, but it's the ultimate oil is really the seven sources. The ultimate oil for the human body is the seven sources. And so mm -hmm. how do I, how, how would you recommend uh, an adult use the your seven sources uh Oil. Well, I I take when I became a vegetarian, uh, I started to make my own cereal, and so I took I sprout a little bit of wheat, and I take make my own granola up, and every morning I do the same thing. I take that one, I put a little bit of yogurt to so get the probiotics and some fresh fruit, and I put the oil on top of it. I took the uh, three tablespoon for average person. Uh, put it in the body. If you have it in the capsule, it's it's just not enough in there. You think you, you don't get enough in the capsule. Mm -hmm. It's also more expensive. So best way is just to have it, uh, buy it in bulk, in, in, a, in a bottle, glass bottle, and then put it in a, a few spoons uh, uh, in your cereal and have, or in your salad. Put it over your salad instead mm -hmm. of olive oil. Any other oil, use that in your salad dressings. You know? And uh, where can I buy the flora flaxseed oils? Does Whole Foods carry it? Whole Food carries Whole it. Foods, yeah. Yes. Sprouts, uh, mothers. Sprouts, yeah. mothers. They all Everybody carry it. carries it. Lassen's. Yeah, Lassen's. Erwan, all the, all the, all the, all the big stores. Yes.
Wow. Yeah. And how long has that been around? Since the since like the mid eighties? Uh not the seven source. This is kind of since Brand new. we found out EP and DHA and plant source, we it's just about a half a year, a year old now. A year old now. We introduced it last year. On the seven sources. On the seven sources, yes. But flaxseed oil itself has been around twenty years now? Yeah, right now I started uh, uh, in eighty three. Was the first one to bring it up to the public knowledge and uh, cold pressed and we really reinvented the ways What does that mean, cold pressed? Crossmat, we really reinvented the way oils are made. I mean, because oils, you know, in its nature become very quickly rancid, except uh, olive oil. Olive oil is very stable, coconut oil is very stable. But uh, really, sunflower, safflower, all the good oils have the omega 3s and flaxseed oils are very unstable. Huh? And if you refine them, and uh, with hexane extraction, you refine them, they become very nicely shelf stable. But you also cause a little side effect that they really are not good for you. They're cancer causing. There's lots of studies for that. So you have to keep it in its natural way. So cold pressed, the old way they did it 100 years ago. That's basically how we make our oils. We, we use small presses which uh, we exclude light and air. And I developed uh, a press basically which doesn't have any air or light in it. And we use very small presses. So you, you invented a, a food press. So what does that look like exactly? It basically is a small expeller press, but it's really about as big as our as a water bottle. And it really, we do artisan style oil so we make i have literally 50 small presses to make our oil rather than oh. making one big press it would be much cheaper to buy one press and make it a big cure and but it gets very hot and it doesn't oh, treat see. the oil gently so i use many many small presses to bring artisan artisan style oil to the market oh so you yeah. help pioneer the artisan oil profession absolutely well? yes oh my I was goodness. the first one to do that you know. and now that is uh people want that Yes, people want that, and I'm very glad. I'm very happy that there's a lot of good. We got a lot of good competition out there who are doing following the same principle of organic oils and so on and so forth. So it's becoming mainstream, which is really the whole purpose is get people healthy, so they can live happier and healthier lives. Well, that sounds good. And where is the Flora headquarters? Can people actually come take a look at the pressing plant? Oh yeah, it's in uh, Linden, Washington. It's up uh, uh, north of Seattle, about an hour and a half north of Seattle in a small town called Linden, right on the Canadian border. And you so and you so you you source organic, say flax seeds and press them in your, right. in your in your in your facility. That's right. Actually in the early days I went because there was no organic. So organic has uh, is is new uh, was newer in the right. 80s. Right. Okay. It was new. So we we set our own certification standard. We as Flora had our own certifier. I hired an independent certifier and I <laughs> rented an RV and together with a certifier we visited all the farmers myself because we wanted to cut out all the middlemen because the farmers should make good money. Yes. And I always believe that I'd rather pay the farmer at the same price as I paid to the broker so he can nurse his families and put them also through school. So we always kept this practice. Fair trade has really been always at the but heart Thomas, of that's our a, company. That's a good idea. Yes. And that worked out well? Worked out very well and still we're doing up to the day. We always buy from the farmers still directly. And you have farmers that you've been working with say for 20 years? Very, very much so. Yes. Well, Thomas, this has been uh, very interesting. How can we contact you? Uh, you contact me at uh, uh, the Castle Rock. Castle Rock. CastleRock.com, okay, or at FloraHealth.com. Flora Health is the Flora website, uh, and uh, feel free to well, contact Thomas, me directly. Thomas, thank you very much. It's been thank it's you. been fun. Thank you. You've been listening to Here's to Your Health on the LA Talk Live broadcast network. I'm your host Joshua Lane. We're going to take a short break. And we'll be right back after these important messages. Live 
Reality Radio, handcrafted for your listening pleasure. This is LA Talk Live, and we're more than just talk. Stay tuned. It started out like a totally normal day. I love you. I mean, I guess I was a little sweaty, and I was definitely sore. I thought I had gas. Turns out, I was having a heart attack. Heart disease is the number one killer of American women. So now I take care of myself and tell the other women in my life to do the same. Make it your mission to save your life and the lives of the women you love. Find out more from the American Heart Association at GoRedForWomen.org. Hi, this is Dr. Levi, your fitness doctor, making a personal house call, inviting you to join me Wednesday at 10 a.m. Pacific for my all-new show, The Dr. Levi Show. Join us as we discuss fitness, health, and well-being, including emotional and spiritual health. So don't forget to tune in to The Dr. Levi Show every Wednesday at 10 a.m. Pacific, exclusively on LATalkLive.com and the Talk Live Broadcast Network. You can also catch us on iTunes, Radio R&B, or watch us on Ustream.tv, or catch us on the Live 365 Network. And now on Radio Flag and Stitcher Radio, reality radio handcrafted for your listening pleasure. This is L.A. Talk Live, and we are more than just talk. Hi, this is Elena inviting you to join me every Wednesday at noon for Elena's Beauty Talk and more exclusively on L.A. Talk Live. You can also catch us on iTunes Radio, R&B, or watch us on Ustream.tv. Reality Radio, handcrafted for your listening pleasure. This is L.A. Talk Live, and we are more than just talk. Joshua Lane, member of the board of directors of Dr. Anne Wigmore's Hippocrates Health Institute, Josh Lane was part of the Dr. Anne Wigmore team that brought wheatgrass, sprouts, and raw foods to a worldwide audience. And now the host of Here's to Your Health on LA Talk Live, Joshua Lane. We're back. Thank you for tuning in to this edition of Here's to Your Health on the LA Talk Live broadcast network. My guest is Sequoia, who has these very popular chips, raw food chips, Cocaroons. It's called Wonderfully Raw, the company. I think Sequoia just won an award this year at the NNFA convention. Sequoia, welcome to Here's to Your Health. Hi. Thank you, Josh. I'm really happy to be here. So first of all, tell my listening audience, what are these chips? What's the, why, why should I eat these chips? Okay. First of all, I'll start out with my own story. Uh, seven years ago, I was diagnosed with diabetes. And I was living a very healthy lifestyle. My husband and I have a healing center in Watsonville, and I just couldn't believe that I had diabetes. So it put me on the journey of really exploring the way I was eating, what I was doing to my body, and different ways to heal myself. And I ended up studying at uh, Living Light Culinary Institute in Mendocino Mm -hmm. and becoming a raw food chef. And being there and getting downloaded with all this exciting information about creating vegetable-based foods that not only taste good but that heal the body was just amazing to me. So I began teaching, and people loved my food and said, could you please get this in the market? Mm. And I would say, oh, you know, I'm 56 years old. I really don't want to start a company right now. I've got a great life. And no, I'll just keep teaching. Well, one thing led to another, and about two years ago, I brought the macaroons to our local New Leaf markets and met with their buyers, Mm -hmm. and they loved it. And they said to me, how quickly can we get them? I said, could you give us 30 days? I don't have a bag or a label. Uh 30 days later, we were in our first seven stores, and two years now, we're in over 2,000 stores. Well, that's remarkable. Yes. So our, our macaroons are a raw, vegan kosher, organic, non-GMO project verified macaroon. Okay, now for my listening audience, what does vegan mean? Vegan means no animal products used at all. Vegan means no animal products, okay. Uh-huh. So it means there's no meat or fish or eggs. Or eggs right. or cream or anything. Right. So there's like seven ingredients, raw coconut, almond flour. We sweeten with maple syrup because it's so much better on 
the pancreas for people with blood sugar issues, a little vanilla, and it's all food that is real food. Since it's dehydrated at 118 degrees, all the enzymes, nutrients, and vitamins are still in the food. Uh -huh. So we're feeding our body, and it also tastes delicious. What I found when I was reversing the diabetes, I'm off all medication, my A1C is normal. Good for you. Is that I needed food that tastes good that I could stick with. Mm -hmm. I'm not like Mikey. I can't eat everything, so I really needed it to taste good. That's an old good. commercial. I remember that commercial. Exactly. Mm -hmm. right. okay. And so that's what started the Cocoa Runes. And then my son, who's also the president of our company, is a big chef in New York City. And I asked him to move back to California to become our partners, which he did. And with his flavor profile and my raw food expertise, now we have the team that could build not only healthy food, but also, again, food that tastes good. Now, the almond flour, and you use coconut meal? What do you use? No, shredded no. coconut. Shredded coconut. Mm -hmm. So that seems to be a very progressive idea, the almond flour and the coconut meal and why should I be eating that it just tastes good why it tastes good um, the almond flour is gluten free and gluten right now seems to be a very big issue with people with celiac so also children with autism can eat it it's easily digest very high fiber mm -hmm. and really good for you and so what exactly is gluten again it is a it's a, it's a protein. Yes. It's a protein. And, and a lot of people feel they, do, they just do, they do not do well on foods that have gluten. They're allergic to it, and it also clogs the arteries. Okay. And so it makes it very hard to digest, and then all their arteries are stuck, and things don't move. Now, these chips, uh, I eat these with a meal. I have them with tea. I mean, are they just cookies? They're just kind of fun? Is that it? Well, the macaroons are a cookie. You can have them for breakfast. You can eat them as a snack. A lot of people who exercise um, love to eat a bag of cocoa runes or a few cocoa runes before they exercise. Runners eat them. Huh? Anybody can eat them any time of day. The vegetable snacks, we also have a line called Brussel Bites, which is Brussels sprouts in two flavors, like a kale chip, but they're, we're using Brussels sprouts. That's a lovely idea. Tamarind apple and chili pumpkin seed crunch. They're delicious. Huh. And the snip chips here are parsnips. So we've dehydrated parsnips in three flavors, cheesy herb truffle, chipotle lime cilantro, and dill pickle. Wow. Now the wow. snips could also be used with hummus or guacamole, snacking a nice salty treat, like a potato chip, but a healthy version. Now these products, of course, Whole Foods carries these. And so once you make it with Whole Foods, then obviously, you know, everyone's, uh, oh, that's better. Yeah. Thank you, Richard. Everyone, uh, you know, will buy the products. So who's the profile? Who's buying these? Is it is just the running vegan? Is it, you know, the athletic guy? Is it uh, upscale restaurants? Who, who's buying them? Everyone's buying them. Moms are buying them for their kids, especially with the cocoa runes. They want a nice sweet treat for the children to be able to take to school or eat at birthday parties, knowing that they're putting something healthy in the body. Um, the snip chips and the Brussels bites might have started out with the uh, kale chip lovers of the world, people that are really into health foods. But what we are noticing that it is a transition food. People in mainstream America are buying this food and saying, wow, this really tastes good. I can eat this. I had a blogger the other day from, I think it was Texas. And when she held up the bag and she says on camera, she says, these really scared me. I have to tell you, Brussels sprouts. And then she says, I got to tell you, if you see them, buy them because they taste so good. So even mainstream America, once they get the courage to try something new, they end up really liking it. So when mainstream America tries them, they try them as a gourmet item. They're <laughs> trying a is that is it? And then it was... It, it does taste great and it's actually good for me. So is that how you, is that is that what you're going after, kind of the gourmet market? No, we're going after all the markets. We believe that once the product gets into the store, we have demos everywhere. So when someone tastes it and knows that they like it, then they buy it. Very competitively priced with kale chips. And uh, what, do you just want an award this weekend at the trade show? 
Uh, we won the Raw Living Expo Award for 2014 on the Sweet uh, Snacks. I see. Yes. What, was that the one held in Westlake Village? Where yes. was that? In Westlake Village. Oh, yeah, that's, last that, month. That was a. I was kind of a big. I was actually there. That was actually a very. That was fun. That was a yeah. fun event. It's interesting to see that the whole idea of raw foods is has enough people doing it that you could be in Westlake Village and attract a monster crowd. I mean, it was it was packed. I thought, oh, this is interesting. It's one of the largest categories, growing categories in the grocery market today. Raw meaning food in its natural state. Mm -hmm. Not over-processed, not overcooked, so we're really feeding our bodies. And uh, want to give me a website so I can – how do I how do I get in contact with you? Okay, our website is mycocoroons.com, M-Y-C-O-C-O-R-O-O-N-S.com. And where is your healing center in Watsonville? It's in Watsonville, um, and that website would be threetreesretreat.com. Is Watsonville a progressive town? You, you, is interested in, in, in wellness? Well, Santa Cruz is really close by, like oh, 15 University? minutes oh, north. So, yeah, I would assume it's a very progressive town. But is, Watsonville's small. Is there a bunch of other natural foods companies in Watsonville? Yeah, it's uh, on the central coast, so all the growers are there. We get our um, organic parsnips are grown there, organic uh, Brussels sprouts are grown there, everything. Artichoke capital of the world, strawberries. So, yeah. It's well, I bet healthy. the Brussels sprout guys are happy with you. So, people are actually eating their product once in a while. <laughs> I think and so. And parsnips, too. The parsnip guys are probably thrilled to pieces as well. Exactly. A lot of people don't even know what a parsnip is. Right. I have to tell them it's that white looking carrot. Well, you're right. Sequoia of Coco Runes, it's been a pleasure having you on as my guest today on Here's Thank to Your you. Health. Thank you very much. Thank you. You're listening to Here's to Your Health on the LA Talk Live broadcast network. I'm your host, Josh Lane. We're going to take a short break. And we'll be right back after these important messages. We know there are many choices in Internet radio, and the staff and host of LA Talk Live would like to thank you for choosing the Internet's hottest destination for the most eclectic sound and invigorating talk. This is LA Talk Live. We are more than just talk. It started out like a totally normal day. I love you. I mean, I guess I was a little sweaty, and I was definitely sore. I thought I had gas. Turns out I was having a heart attack. Heart disease is the number one killer of American women. So now I take care of myself and tell the other women in my life to do the same. Make it your mission to save your life and the lives of the women you love. Find out more from the American Heart Association at GoRedForWomen.org. Hi, this is Donna Quarles, and I'm inviting you to join us every Wednesday from 5 to 6 p.m. for a new show right here on LA Talk Live, The Dialogue, Real Talk, Real People. Join us as we discuss the topics that are relevant to today's generational leaders. So don't forget to tune in to The Dialogue, Real Talk, Real People, every Wednesday from 5 to 6 p.m. right here on latalklive.com. You can also catch us on iTunes Radio r and Live 365, Radio Flag, and now Stitcher Radio. Or watch and listen directly at latalklive.com. Reality radio handcrafted for your listening pleasure. This is LA Talk Live, and we are more than just talk. Hey, this is James Kenny, inviting you to join me every Thursday at noon for the business of business. Join us as we discuss success and how to reach it. Listen, don't forget to join me every Thursday at noon Pacific Standard Time for the business of business exclusively here on L.A. Talk Live. Hey, and don't forget, you can also catch me on iTunes Radio R&B, Radio Flag, TuneIn Radio, Live 365, AHA Radio, TiVo Radio, and Apple TV Radio, or just watch and listen directly at latalklive.com, where we are more than just talking. Merked it. Young Connection, your one-stop connection for all your graphic design and commercial printing needs. Young Connection is a full-service printing and media design company dedicated to providing the highest level of customer service and satisfaction. Young Connection provides swift response and rapid turnaround services for banners, brochures, business cards, letterheads, 
church bulletins, funeral programs, flyers, logo design, posters, and much, much more, all at an affordable price. Young Connection, the official printing company of LA Talk Live. Give them a call at 310-491-3336. That's 310-491-3336. Or visit their website at www.youngconnection.com. That's www.youngconnection.com. Young Connection Printing and Media Services. Proud sponsors of LA Talk Live, where it's more than just talk. We're back. Thank you for tuning in to this edition of Here's to Your Health on the LA Talk Live broadcast network. I'm your host, Joshua Lane, and we have Thomas Greither. Uh, Thomas is the owner of Castle Rock Spring Water and Flora Supplements sold worldwide. And Thomas also is the owner of the Tango Electric Car. And the Tango Electric Car is manufactured in Washington State. And uh, Thomas will be giving rides and demonstrating the Tango at my natural food store, the Vitamin Center of Agora Hills, tomorrow, that's March 12th, 2004, at 10 o'clock in the morning. If you want to get a ride into Tango, please come by. And this is what the Tango looks like. Now, Thomas, what exactly is the virtues of the Tango? It seems like a very small little car. It looks a little bit like a motorcycle. Yes, it's uh, it's th- actually it's smaller than the Honda Gullwing. Huh? And uh, Rick, the gentleman, a uh, friend of mine who actually invented the car, he was a Porsche salesman in L.A. And he was stuck every day. He was uh, stuck on the I-10 and saw all the motorcyclists going by and said, but he was a bit scared to drive a motorcycle. So I said, well, it would be nice to have a car which is the size of a motorcycle but super safe. So then he started out making the Tango, which is basically, uh, I would say, half a smart. So two people sit in it, like a roller coaster, and uh, it's like driving a roller coaster with a steering wheel in your hand. <laughs> I see. So it, it's, it's for the young sporting enthusiasts, is that it? It's, it's, it's correct. For their, uh, their heart. I mean, I'm new to lane splitting because the car is here in L.A. now, so I have driven it a flu- few times. Up in Washington State, there's no lane splitting, so you're not allowed to do that. But here, it's uh, definitely uh, fantastic when the whole highway stops. And I've gone once from Santa Monica to L.A. at around 6 o'clock in the uh, late, late, late afternoon. And it's basically a parking lot. And for it this 10 miles, yeah. can take you an hour and a half. It and, can, yes. and I basically reduced it by over and a half an hour. And well, just by going in between the cars, following all these motorcycles. So lane splitting, what does lane splitting mean exactly? Lane splitting means that you can, uh, and it's legal in the state of California. So any motorcyclist you see driving on the highways, trying to squeeze through the, through the in between the cars, you know, that's actually legal. And you're supposed to make room for them, share the road is what we say in the state of California so share the road with a motorcyclist and let him go by and uh, that's what lane splitting is you basically squeeze by in between the two cars when it's safe of course when uh, the traffic moves very slowly and you're, so, you're allowed to slowly or a little bit more speed go in between not the really fast ones but slowly that's legal all right so uh, motorcycles are fun but I've heard some people call them the cigarette of transportation. That is, you can really get hurt on a motorcycle, and that, that's unfortunate. You would really, even if you're a great uh, rider, driver rather, some car doesn't see you, uh, there's a rock in the road, something bad happens, and you really have gotten very badly hurt. So the Tango, it's a pretty small car. What are the safety features that might make someone of our age group buy one? Well, I, I used to have a, when I, I lived in Vermont. I used to have a motorcycle, an old Norton Commander. Oh, and, really? And it was fun <laughs> fun to drive. I mean, it's thrill. But then, you know, when it gets cold and it rains and you're on a motorcycle, it's like, 
I don't have to do that uh, anymore. And then right. they had an accident on a dirt road that sort of slid to the side with a motorbike. It just lost a bit of my skin, but no, nothing else happened. But I figured it was time to stop riding a motorcycle. And then I got married. Of course, my wife wouldn't dare let me on a motorcycle. Yeah. So, for her, right? for her, yeah. <laughs> so when that tango came along, I said, like, wow, that's the next big thing to a motorcycle. You know, it goes from zero to 60 in 3.6 seconds. So it's, Wait, excuse me. It goes from zero to 60 in 3.6 seconds. Now, that's that's very, very fast. That's super car fast. Uh, and so it's uh, – and, and you, it's not said you would abuse it, but you need it to pull yourself – out of a dangerous situation. In the motorcyclist, because cars are driving, they don't see you or something like that. You need to be able to escape quickly a potentially dangerous situation. So that's why it's really good to have that type of acceleration. All right. Oh, let's talk about other safety features. So and what about yeah. the yeah, tell me what why I might even consider getting in this. Well, the safety the biggest safety feature is really and what attracted me is that uh, Rick who embedded the car is a race car driver. So he designed to this car with a 200 miles an hour crash rated, NASDAQ rated crash cage. It's like a safety cell. So it actually has more safety, more steel in it than any Volvo or any Mercedes S-Class in the door. It's actually oh. twice, almost four times as much steel on the side. It, it anchors the doors, anchor into the frame, and it's built not out of stainless steel, out of chrome molly. Chrome molly is what the race car drivers use as a safety cell. It's the strongest steel known to man right now, and it really is acts oh. like a super protective sorry, cage. So what's it called again? Chrome molly. And so, and you said... This is built to withstand a NASCAR-type crash of 200 miles an hour. That's correct. Which means that if you do crash, you the car remains the integrity of the car remains. You don't just become a pretzel. That's correct. You you, the, uh, you basically stay alive, you know, and then you're in a safety cell, and you get crushed around, but it stays intact, you know. I mean. A lot of accidents happen between trucks and uh, oh, small God, cars yeah, and so on and so forth. And there's not much room left that the cars get squeezed where this would not happen. I mean, a big American truck would have a worse safety survival rates than the little Tango because it has this structural integrity with a safety cell. And what is this car, the Tango electric car, which is manufactured in Washington State, What what's the what's the source of energy? It's an electric car. And when I got it uh, five years ago, and I was kind of like seed money into the company, and it was, uh, I think it was car number seven or six or seven, and he built about 12 so far, and uh, it used to have lead acid battery. So when I, when I got mine, it only was about 35 miles ahead range. Okay, it was very, very short. Right. Now I upgraded it a couple of years ago to lithium ion batteries. And Lith lithium ion batteries. Yes, lithium ion batteries. This is, this is a new technology, better? It's new yeah. technology that can store much more energy. And it's basically what all electric cars are using. Tesla uses lithium ion uh, batteries. Oh, they do. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yes. And uh, is the lithium-ion battery smaller than the other battery? Yes, they're basically small batteries. Uh, basically, you use laptop batteries. A few hundred of them are in the car. And it's oh, really? similar to what's also in the Tesla. You know? And uh, so the range on the Tango is about 100 miles? It's about 100 miles because you can't get more batteries in it, basically. Because it's such a small car, that's all you can get. You sit basically on a whole, on a stainless steel fire rated crash rated box where all the batteries are inside and uh, that's basically the screwed in between the two uh, tires front and back tires mm -hmm. and uh if i was to buy one of these who, who would service it for me right now uh, rick the owner himself you just give him a call and say rick <laughs> you it, and uh, you have to be a little bit uh, technology uh, savvy because he guy he usually walks me through a problem but I tell you we had maybe a few problems in the first two years but the car is now five years old and um, seriously I haven't had anything in the last few years you know it, it just drives you know electric cars don't break down really you know, there's just nothing to break down the only thing is needed is basically brakes okay and new tires that's all it needs and some light bulbs maybe the light bulbs break down but that's basically all the wear and tear there is that's by you know 
electric cars haven't been very unpopular because people don't make money on selling them because uh, there's is that, no... Is that really your opinion that one of the reasons why the large car corporations don't necessarily want to go electric is because th there's theoretically less profit as far as repairs, etc.? Is, yes. is that your thinking? Is that, a, is well, that, is that I, fair? I tell you something really interesting story. In the, I'm part of Vancouver. I live very close to the Canadian border. So in Vancouver, Canada, is an electric car club. And they have a 1910 Detroit Electric. Really? And believe it or not, they only switched the batteries two years ago to a new pack. No so it kidding. lasted over 100 years, the first pack of batteries. And they got about... Uh, 70 miles out of one pack a hundred years ago. So you tell me if that's suppressed technology <laughs> or whatever, whatever it is. It is definitely is factual right now. And if you know the trains on the road right now, the diesel trains, and everybody thinks, oh, it's a diesel train. But people don't realize it's actually an electric train with a diesel generator on board. And each axle on the train sits an electric engine is an electric engine and electric engine have so much torque that can pull a big train like you see this long never-ending trains only an electric engine can pull that no combustion engine could ever pull such a, a large train that's why really electricity as for trucks like a same like uh, like a, a locomotive tap on 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 wheels would be the future because they would spend a lot more less energy, would be a lot safer, they could pull more, would be more efficient and everything. But it's, we're still a ways away from that part. But uh, it just shows you that this technology is around. The Chevy Volt is not new technology. It's just reinvented the old. And By the way, we, so the Tango is a car that you're happy to give rides uh, in uh, at my shop tomorrow, but you also own a Chevy Volt. And... Are you happy with the Chevy Volt? Well, I tell you, it's probably the best car I've ever owned. I've never had anything wrong with the Chevy Volt. It, and you've had it for how long now? I had it now for two years. Two, two years, years and no trouble? Zero trouble? Zero trouble. And where did you car. buy your Chevy Volt? I, I bought it up at a Chevy dealer up north in uh, Washington. Did you yeah. lease it or did you buy it? I actually bought it. Yeah. Okay, because I know that they are leasing them. Yes. I think they were leasing them for a while for $199 a month if you put $3,000 down. Yeah. I had. Uh, but you decided you wanted you just wanted one. Well, actually, I didn't pay a dollar for it because I had two old cars that traded against it. No kidding. <laughs> yes. Okay. I got actually this is the first time I bought a car where I got five thousand dollar back because the two cars that traded were worth more than the Volt. Well, you must be a, you must be a good business person to get money back from a car dealer. Well, yeah. I mean, there were uh, there were uh, some an old uh, flatbed truck which was very little used, and uh, that's what I traded in against. And the, on the Chevy the Volt. What's the advantage of that? I mean, when you drive, for example, is it just terribly quiet and it's luxurious? You know, I have driven many cars from Bentleys on and so on, and this car is quieter than a Bentley. It accelerates nicer. I, I with my Chevy Volt, you have so much torque. The same, of course, the Tango is just the same, much much higher. The Chevy Volt has basically four seats. And uh, so it's a little larger and more practical. You can put a lot of stuff in it. I only have two seats, and I can get, I only can get uh, about four cases of water in it. In a Chevy Volt, I can get about 30 cases of water in it. So it just shows you the difference. And Thomas, what is what does the word torque mean? Torque means basically uh, the power, the muscle power. To start out with the instantaneous, so to, in layman's terms, the in instantaneous muscle power. You know, when these guys lift these weights up, you know, that is the torque in their muscles there, push it up, instantaneous power. You know, and that's basically what a, a torquey engine is, a tractor is. They have instantaneous power. It, you do in a tractor, usually they gear the way to do it. In an electric engine, you don't have to gear it because it's just one engine, no gears, anything goes just on that. And now you've had the Chevy Volt for two years. What's gone wrong with your Chevy Volt, and how many miles have you put on it? I have on the Chevy Volt now about uh, 20,000 okay, miles 20, on it. Okay, mm 20,000. -hmm. And I went the first 8,000 miles I only put, uh, did on the first gas tank. So I, what, I, what gets me is people really do the mathematics and calculate the difference. They would 
the, the savings are instantaneous because you don't need any gas anymore. And at home, uh, you plug it in. I plug it in at work. I, uh, I have a, a charger at work and I char have a charger at home. So I charge it everywhere I can. I never, literally never buy any gasoline anymore. I'm independent of gasoline. And, you know, if you have three, four solar cells on your roof, you can even charge to get the, uh, the electricity for free if you want to. So is that something they've also added to the Chevy Volt? No, that's in the future. I want to do that to my house. Oh, to your house, I see. <laughs> yes. I see but it, it, it rains a lot in Washington State, so we don't get so much sunshine. Yeah, it's, so you have in California, is actually perfect for that. Yeah. Huh. Well, Thomas, this has been very exciting. Uh, Thomas Grather will be showing his Tango electric car at my supplement store in Agora Hills. Uh, called the Vitamin Center of Agora Hills, and that'll be tomorrow, March 12th, at 10 in the morning. For further information, uh, please give me a call, 818-707-0005. That's 818-707-0005. I'm your host, Josh Lane. We're going to take a short break, and we'll be right back after these important messages. <laughs> We know there are many choices in internet radio, and the staff and host of LA Talk Live would like to thank you for choosing the internet's hottest destination for the most eclectic sound and invigorating talk. This is LA Talk Live. We are more than just talk. It started out like a totally normal day. I love you. I mean, I guess I was a little sweaty, and I was definitely sore. I thought I had gas. Turns out I was having a heart attack. Heart disease is the number one killer of American women. So now I take care of myself and tell the other women in my life to do the same. Make it your mission to save your life and the lives of the women you love. Find out more from the American Heart Association at GoRedForWomen.org. Hi, this is Susie Pruden. And yes, you've seen me on Oprah, Good Morning America, and The Today Show. And I'm inviting you to join me every Monday from 3 to 4 for my new show, Mastermind Live. Join us as we introduce you to the new thought leaders of the world who will inspire you, support you, and guide you to your next level. So don't forget to tune into Mastermind Live exclusively on latalklive.com. You can also catch us on iTunes Radio R&B or watch us on Ustream TV. Reality Radio handcrafted for your listening pleasure. This is LA Talk Live, and we are more than just talk. Hey, everybody, it's your man Sabir Bay back on your airwaves, inviting you to join us every Tuesday, 3 p.m. Pacific Standard Time on the Sabir Bay Show, discussing history, law, and hip hop. Every Tuesday, 3 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, the Sabir Bay Show, exclusively on latalklive.com. You also can catch us on iTunes Radio and RB, Live 365, Radio Flag, and now Stitcher Radio. Or watch us and listen directly at latalklive.com. Reality Radio, handcrafted for your listening pleasure. This is LA Talk Live, and we are more than just talk. Joshua Lane, member of the board of directors of Dr. Anne Wigmore's Hippocrates Health Institute, Josh Lane was part of the Dr. Anne Wigmore team that brought wheatgrass, sprouts, and raw foods to a worldwide audience. And now the host of Here's to Your Health on LA Talk Live. Joshua Lane. We're back. Thank you for tuning in to this edition of Here's to Your Health on the LA Talk Live broadcast network. I'm your host, Joshua Lane, and Thomas Grather today is my co-host. And uh, we do want to mention once again that uh, Thomas uh, is going to be giving rides in his Tango electric car at my natural food store, the Vitamin Center of Agora Hills in Agora Hills, California. And the phone number for information is 818-707-0005. 
818-707-0005. And also we'd like to mention, uh, Thomas was chatting about his uh, Castle Rock spring water bottled at the source in Mount Shasta, California. And this week won the award. Well, you, Thomas, tell you tell us. which. Award? Well, we, we are very proud of this award because uh, it's in Berkeley Springs in West Virginia. It's actually a very interesting town because it's like Bass of England. Yes. And they have a little, they have a little uh, tub there, which actually George Washington actually took a bass in there. So that town started to reinvent itself, and in, uh, the city decided we need to do something for getting people into this town. So they started this international water competition 24 years ago. And Arthur von Wiesenberger, he uh, lives in Santa Barbara. He's probably the most distinguished water sommelier in uh, what's that word again water sommelier it's like uh -huh. a wine sommelier uh -huh. yes, uh -huh. in uh, here in the united states and he this year you know we're very proud of winning it this year because he brought on a famous german uh, martin riese from germany he brought on as a water sommelier and we're very happy to actually win uh win this world best bottled water uh gold medal uh, for the best bottled water in the world this year. So we're ha very glad to have it because it's such a unique water and I'm really proud of it because it's I people ask me, do I own the water? I said, no, I actually don't own the water. It's actually owned by the city of Dunsmuir and it is a joint community project between the city of Dunsmuir and a non-profit spiritual organization which makes it so special. It's for me a way of giving back to the community and doing a business which is not puts money first, but puts the people first and the community first before any money is made. And the water really does taste good. Uh, you know, I mean, it, 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 people who drink bottled water will know instantaneously that the water tastes fantastic. Yes. And gl glacier melt, you know, uh, the interesting thing, there's something like oxygen isotopes in the water, which are produced by glaciers. And they're, uh, so we measured these oxygen isotopes and found out it comes from the 7,000 foot level. Uh, the water. So that's how this beautiful crisp taste. And people who like wine or so on, you know, you have to clear your palate. I didn't understand it until the water sommelier actually explained it to me, Martin. Uh, he, he said that you actually need a certain dissolved solids of minerals in the water to make it smooth to clear the palate. So really only a very high quality spring water can really clear your palate. And our water has a perfect balance of this naturally we didn't have to manufacture it we didn't have to add any vitamin or minerals to it it's just as god intended it comes right out of these cracks uh, of these underground caves out of the mountain thomas you besides your grandfather and father being involved with wellness in your third generation you mentioned that at the when you were going to the University of Vermont as an undergraduate or after graduated, you traveled the world studying the food habits of traditional peoples, the traditional food habits? Yes, I kind of stepped in the footsteps of my grandfather. And he, uh, as I said before, he was. He said that death, his motto was that death sits in the colon. And I, I found out just through, I would eat meat, I grew up with meat, and I, I, I uh, found out that I actually had a, a kidney stone. Mm -hmm. So I passed, I was in the middle of the wilderness uh, in northern Canada, and uh, we, we flew in with canoes into the wilderness, and they paddled out, and of this middle of, Two days into the wilderness experience, I passed a kidney stone. Not a, not a good place to be when you have a not kidney stone. Not a good stone. place to have it. No. And it's a, such a painful thing that I thought, gosh, the first time I thought, boy, you know, if I died, it would be very nice thing because the pain is so obnoxious. So this was a wake-up call for me that I stepped in the footsteps of my grandfather and said, well, you know, I really have to change my diet. So I became a vegetarian 30 years ago too and have uh, – introduced whole diets and in when that happened during the university days i went from out of medicine into human nutrition foods and i wanted to really find out what is it why are there these hunters why are these ancient civilizations there which we still know some in the himalayas why are these people getting 120 130 years old so i set out there going into himalayas on these hikes and that we're talking now 1982 so mm -hmm. it's a long time, a long ago. time ago 
So I went out there as a university student, and you know it was very funny because I told my dad I'm going to take a year off and study these ancient cultures, and then my dad said, you know. You just want to have fun. You're going to pay for it yourself. So <laughs> you don't get a penny on the whole thing. You're going to have to. So I worked. And it's a lot of work. Collected, I got the money together. And I went to the university professors and said, you know, I'm going to do this too. No matter my, my dad's not going to pay for it. I'm going to work myself. And uh, I want to do that and see what these ancient cultures did. And the university professors were so, uh, the University of Vermont, they were so nice and so supportive said uh, I went ventured out with my backpack and literally on a, on a budget of uh, like less than ten dollars a day I went around the world I bought a ticket around the world for at that time it was like 1300 bucks or so on and I went for a whole year <laughs> traveling around the world and I went to different cultures and it was really an amazing experience going into the Himalayas going into you know going 10,000 feet in little villages where people, proclaimed to live 120, 130 years old. And I thought, well, you know, what what makes a person live 130 years? You know, they had, didn't have a birth certificate, you know, right. but you know, you know, you could say a critical person would say, well, you know, you know, anybody, you know, as soon as you get 60 or 70 years, you start bragging about the age. <laughs> but even <laughs> you know how it goes. So even if they were 90 or 80 years old, they were in really good shape. You know, they were still manning their fields. They were harvesting their barley. They grew up there. They ha- they did all a heavy duty physical work because up up there they were just basically farmers. You know, and they're basically just grew barleys. Yula is a, a variety of uh, buckwheat they're using a, as a protein. And they were, everybody was vegetarian. They had a little bit of milk product, but uh, oh, really? basically they were, they were milk and a, grain. A very basic one or two items. They up, and, and what, what's, me, was it cow's milk or goat's milk or sheep's milk? Or was it basically all? cow's milk cow's at milk. the time. Some sheep, uh, goat's milk too, but basically mostly cows. And what, what fascinated me, there was the absence of any degenerative diseases. You couldn't see any arteriosclerosis, no clogged up uh, arteries, you know, no heart attacks, none of this type of stuff. I said, wow, what are they doing which keeps them healthy? And really, I started to find out things which my grandfather found out, you know, that they actually, you know, they're eating a whole food diet, right. mostly raw, some cooked foods, but wholesome made foods, naturally fermented foods, you know, they fermented their own yogurts, they fermented their, they made um, their own breads, you know, and breads nowadays, you can, when you buy, when you go to a typical supermarket, they have rising agent, they have preservative, you know, do you ever wondered why bread we buy right now lasts so long and is so nice and fresh because the enhancers in there to keep it this way. Right. But these enhancers, have side effects, right? And these are not healthy, really healthy for you. So really, you have to go back to to raw food, to the basis of life. It's just simple, good foods, you know. And I'm not proclaiming to become a vegetarian, but sure, it does help. But it has to be unrefined, organic, back to nature, unprocessed foods. And this is really what keeps you healthy and what really uh, keeps the energy level up. You know, yeah. So when you as a young man were touring these lands, even if people didn't have birth certificates, you would say your observation was you saw a large percentage of the older population busy, busily engaged in their activities. They were not infirm, but they were robust. Is that what you're saying? They were robust. They were very active at a high age. In 130, if they were 130, they were very active. They were carrying things around, like I carry my water around, that there wasn't a problem. And that was for me, and I, at the time I was only 21 years old, I mean, it was an amazing experience to see that and that this vitality in this gentleman and then they one monk I still remember I studied the cranes and all of a sudden somebody tapped me on the back and there was this monk this uh, Buddhist monk was there and he said this is Yula you know you stick to simple foods he said to me and he spoke English surprisingly he spoke English. stick to simple foods it keeps you healthy and then he walked off and I was <laughs> and I shouldn't just say simple foods he said also said trust in God and, you know, America is a country in every dollar bill in God we trust. Right. So always we, we come naked, leave naked. So it's an interesting thing. So I, I in, in on my travels, I had a very substantial experience. I actually almost died. 
and I was climbing up one of these waterfalls <laughs> in the mountains, and uh, it was beautiful. And it just we were able to slide down from one to the other. And as the last, there was a little paddle. There was a beautiful waterfall going down, maybe 300 yards, you know. And I was sliding down, and as and as it wasn't going very steep down, so I thought, well. You know, I'm just going to just peek over and see if I can see the waterfall. And all of a sudden, I started sliding because the moisture from the waterfall created so much. And I was sliding and sliding. And I went backwards and ba on my back. And I was sliding down there. And an inch before, literally, it was like a wall. I stopped. And I have absolutely no explanation. It was an angel or whatever it was. But I sure was glad. So it was alive. I creeped up with my claws out of that, uh, out of the waterfalls, and the next day I came, uh, I met the, 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 in a hotel. I ex explained them what what happened to me. He said, "You are so lucky to me that two other tourists just died a month before who did the same thing what you did." So I said, "My God, I am really glad to be alive." This was in Nepal. Where was this? That was in uh, actually that happened that happened in Malaysia on one of these uh, trips. Well, that's quite a story. Yeah. Well, Thomas Greider, you have been co-hosting the show today. I very much appreciate <laughs> it. Uh, listen to Thomas Greider, owner of Castle Rock Spring Water and also Flora, a great company, uh, sold worldwide. And Thomas is going to be at my shop tomorrow, the Vitamin Center of Agora Hills in Agora Hills, California, at 10 a.m., giving rides in his Tango electric car. For further information, uh, please give me a call, 818 707 Zero 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 five. That's eight one eight seven zero seven zero 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 five. Please stay tuned to Here's to Your Health, and we'll be right back after these important messages. We know there are many choices in internet radio, and the staff and host of LA Talk Live would like to thank you for choosing the internet's hottest destination for the most eclectic sound and invigorating talk. This is LA Talk Live. We are more than just talk. Young Connection, your one-stop connection for all your graphic design and commercial printing needs. Young Connection is a full-service printing and media design company dedicated to providing the highest level of customer service and satisfaction. Young Connection provides swift response and rapid turnaround services for banners, brochures, business cards, letterheads, church bulletins, funeral programs, flyers, logo design, posters, and much, much more, all at an affordable price. Young Connection, the official printing company of LA Talk Live. Give them a call at 310-491-3336. That's 310-491-3336. Or visit their website at www.youngconnection.com. That's www.youngconnection.com. Young Connection Printing and Media Services, proud sponsors of LA Talk Live, where it's more than just talk. Hi, this is Starla Quarles, and I'm inviting you to join us every Wednesday from 5 to 6 p.m. for a new show right here on LA Talk Live, The Dialogue, Real Talk, Real People. Join us as we discuss the topics that are relevant to today's generational leaders. So don't forget to tune in to The Dialogue, Real Talk, Real People, every Wednesday from 5 to 6 p.m. right here on latalklive.com. You can also catch us on iTunes Radio r and Live 365, Radio Flag, and now Stitcher Radio. Or watch and listen directly at latalklive.com. Reality radio, handcrafted for your listening pleasure. This is LA Talk Live, and we are more than just talk. We're back. Thank you for tuning in to this edition of Here's to Your Health on the LA Talk Live 
Broadcast Network. I'm your host, Joshua Lane. My guest is Adam Friedman, who is the inventor of the advanced athletic bars and whey protein powder. Adam just had a busy morning driving around. Uh, welcome to Here's to Your Health. Thank you for having me. Please get close to the microphone. This, this is not a mime show. Thank you very good. Is that and, better? Uh, Thank you for having me. My pleasure. And uh, what is your background as far as producing these better quality athletic supplements? Well, I'm uh, by trade a strength and conditioning coach, oh. and I work with a lot of athletes in every discipline at every level. Uh, I've worked with a lot of uh, professional athletes, Olympic athletes, and I'm also a sports nutritionist. And for years, uh, being a very busy uh, individual with with my clients and also supporting them with their nutrition, um, I grew frustrated with what was available to them as far as meal replacements, protein bars, mm -hmm. uh, for them to keep on top of their nutrition and as well for me to keep on top of my nutrition and be the example. Uh, I felt that there was a need, a gap uh, for a high quality uh, solution. And uh, I had no desire to get into the protein bar business or meal replacement bar business, but it was something that I felt very passionately about that that what was out there was low quality and was causing uh, more issues than benefit. Mm -hmm. And so what I sought out to do was just create the highest quality product that I could, didn't spare anything when it came to quality. And uh, what I ended up with is the Advanced Athletics Bar. Advanced Athletics is the name of my training business. And being that I work with athletes and I like to specialize in, in helping them, um, I wanted to put something together that was going to support them with their needs. And with that came a product that would actually serve anyone's needs. Uh, because the foundation is revolves around uh, blood sugar stabilization. Uh, that's my uh, the principle at which I teach nutrition. Is right, that's a very important concept, to keep your blood sugar stable. So right. please tell the listening audience, what does that mean? Well, in our body, our our blood sugar is what fuels our brain and nervous system, mm -hmm. and it likes to keep a certain range in order for us to feel in balance inside, internally. It's what uh, is one of the factors in creating homeostasis. Mm -hmm. And the way that we want to support our blood sugar is through food. Um, if we do not support it through food properly, then there are prices to pay where we are going to have uh, deficiencies. We are going to um, lose energy. We are going to have blood uh, sugar cravings. Mm -hmm. We're going to lose muscle. We're going to uh, be moody. You know, all the th all the things that we really don't want are a result of not providing that through food. And with food, when we provide the right balance of macronutrients, protein, carbohydrates, and fat, then we are actually properly stabilizing our blood sugar within that meal. And then when we're doing that consistently over a period of uh, three to four hours throughout the day, that is going to support our blood sugar. And uh, typically, a lot of the supplements, protein bars out there, or just in general, are high sugar, low quality ingredients. Um, and even the, some of the meals that people quickly grab out uh, on the market may be generally higher carbohydrate content. Um, I don't have an, a, a, an issue with carbohydrates. Right. I have an issue with them not being in balance to uh, slowly release that glucose into our bloodstream so that we can stay stable for a, a length of time. Uh, for those who are just uh, tuning in, we're speaking with Adam Friedman, who is the inventor of these advanced athletic uh, bars and uh, protein powders. Now, I was listening to NPR a couple of months ago, and they were said that athletes now are much more alert to nutrition than they were, say, 15, 20 years ago, and that when the Lakers travel, all their food is catered by Whole Foods. That was on NPR, so it wasn't like a couple of guys in the gym talking to each other. It was like, on NPR, they said this, and I thought, oh, that made sense to me, but I was very happy to hear that. What is in your bars that you feel makes them a quality product? What what makes it stand out amongst all the rest out there is, uh, number one, is the quality of the protein. Um, the protein is whey protein, mm -hmm. which is a byproduct of cheese uh, coming from cows. Mm -hmm. And 
uh, conventional protein, uh, or I should say dairy, uh, comes from factory farmed cows, yes. where they are injected with growth hormones, antibiotics, they are uh, not given sunlight, they're, they're deprived. Right. And uh, so this causes an unhealthy cow, uh, and hence an unhealthy dairy product. And uh, this is what I believe causes a lot of issues that people have with dairy. Uh, potentially it could, yeah. Potentially yeah. it could. As healthy milk. As healthy milk. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it, some people have reactions. I think the body is very intelligent when it knows that something is not pure and it reacts accordingly. Yeah. And uh, what stands out with the, the whey protein that I source is actually coming from uh, – factory uh, non-factory farm so it's actually all the cows are not injected with growth hormones they are not injected with antibiotics to serve as a means to uh, spur growth mm -hmm. or uh, so would you say this is or an or use an organic way I found I sourced an or organic grass-fed way so the cows are also fed uh, the proper diet which is what they're digestive system is meant to have mm -hmm. so that they do not get sick again. It's all about maintaining a healthy animal that is going to produce a healthy product. And therefore, uh, the, the ingredients in this are a much higher quality. It's just the same as if someone were to uh, purchase organic eggs or right. organic meats. Right. It's just that higher level of quality. Right. It's that next step that um, no one else has really been willing to take a, a, a chance on. reason is because it's uh, because these cows are not forced to produce milk, it, it creates a little bit of a supply uh, challenge mm -hmm. where it's not going to be year-round. These cows are going to produce when they naturally produce, and sometimes that is not supporting maybe big business and high volumes like some of these companies that just want to really generate tons of cash. My, oh. my interest is about creating quality nutrition and serving those that care about what goes in their body. And how many grams of protein am I getting if I eat one of your bars? The entire bar has 20 grams of protein. Which is which is a very good amount. Isn't it's it? a sufficient yeah, amount right. that would be considered enough for a meal. Mm -hmm. And that's why I consider these a meal replacement. Um, and what also is unique about this bar is that they are gluten-free. Uh, I, I look to take away a lot of the... Uh, Maybe the conflicts that people might have with a product, a, a prepared product. No, good for you. Um, no. I know that people have sensitivities to whether it's gluten, soy, grains, sugar. Uh, you know whether someone has a health issue. So there's uh, no gluten, there's no soy protein, there is no added sugar in the entire bar. There's only two grams of naturally occurring sugar. Really? Wow. Uh, there's a quality B complex vitamin. There's also no peanuts. There's some people that have peanut allergies, so I remove that. And you know, there's also no grains. So people are starting to move t towards uh, a paleo type of philosophy where they're removing grains. Well, uh, some some people are. Some, some people, people are. Some reading and experimenting. Alrighty. So tell me then. Tell my listening audience. What is in your product? What is the ingredients? The ingredients in the product, it starts with the, the whey protein. Mm -hmm. uh, grass-fed whey protein. The, the number one most abundant ingredient is the organic grass-fed whey mm -hmm. protein. And then it's followed by a uh, uh, some other hormone-free proteins, whey proteins. Uh, we have organic almonds. We have uh, organic vegetable glycerin. Uh, we have some dietary vegetable fiber. Uh, tap, uh, we also have... Um, so we have in the pumpkin, we have two flavors, by the way. We have pumpkin and chocolate. In the pumpkin, we actually have real pumpkin, uh, oh. or, organic coconut oil. We have the B-complex uh, vitamin, which is a, a good quality. Uh, we have organic acai, organic carrot juice, uh, organic vanilla extract, organic stevia, and lohan guo, which is monk fruit. Um, and the chocolate has a similar base. It, it actually has real pumpkin inside of it. Uh, What's different is that it has cacao nibs, which is the raw form of chocolate, which is a great antioxidant, as well as it has the cocoa and the chocolate liqueur that make the chocolate. Okay, so based on what I know, you seem to fit all the right notes. How has the response been to the athletes you work with? The athletes absolutely love it because what they find is it, it really works to hold them over for l lengths of time where – 
they're just starting a workout. They need something that's going to sustain them f- for their long workouts. Mm-hmm. They might have a, a break in a, I, I train a professional baseball player and he'll have this between innings or between workout sessions and it helps to sustain him for the length of time. So he feels energized, he feels focused. And um, I've also um, have a, a few professional uh, teams that purchase this for their their players. Oh, good for you! And uh, so it's 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 working on all levels. It's also working with people, uh, not just high end athletes. It's not just for high high end athletes. Uh, there's also people with blood sugar challenges, uh, diabetics that this works for as well to help them stabilize their blood sugar. And uh, it works for kids because it is all clean and it does not have that added sugar that tends to send them off a little bit. Right. Uh, Out of my question then is, how do you recommend I use this bar? Should I use it when I come back from the gym, before I go to the gym, before I go to work? How do I use it in your opinion? That's a great question. Uh, it's it's all individual. It's really what your nutritional uh, plan is for that day. So no matter how many meals you have, this will be one of those meals to help to sus- it all goes back to stabilizing your blood sugar. So depending on when you last ate, right. and you could work it uh, into before workout. There's actually two pieces in each package, so you could have huh. half a bar uh, right well, before a workout, idea. and smart then the idea. other half immediately after, and then that will work to stabilize your blood sugar until you get your next meal. Okay, good. Adam, we, we're running out of time for this segment. How can we contact you? Uh, you could visit my website. It's advancedathletics.com. And you can send me an email. You could. Uh, I'd love to get everyone's feedback, and I'd love to um, share this product with everyone. And I also have a new product that's called Whey Protein Pops that's just new on the market. So check it out. That sounds very good. Adam, thanks for being guest today, and here's to your health. Thanks for having me, Josh. Thank you. You've been listening to Here's to Your Health on the LA Talk Live broadcast network. I'm your host, Josh Lane. We're going to take a short break, and we'll be right back after these important messages. It started out like a totally normal day. I love you. I mean, I guess I was a little sweaty and I was definitely sore. I thought I had gas. Turns out I was having a heart attack. Heart disease is the number one killer of American women. So now I take care of myself and tell the other women in my life to do the same. Make it your mission to save your life and the lives of the women you love. Find out more from the American Heart Association at GoRedForWomen.org. Hello world, I love you and I love me. Real talk straight from the heart brain. It's Madam Vibrations here, founder of Vibrations, sharing the Love Your Skin Body Butter, also known as a booty butter. Vibrations creates with the highest vibrational energy on this planet Earth, which is love. So please support yourself, the world, and lupus community by purchasing any Vibrations healthy and living products. I also make vegan therapeutic living candles. You can find my products and the Bee Lounge located at 4873 Topanga Canyon Boulevard, Woodland Hills, California, 91364, and at the Ink Rich Tattoo and Piercing located at 7211 Van Nuys Boulevard, Van Nuys, California, 91405. Thank you for the highest good of all. I love you and I love me. Hey, everyone. This is Richard Carr, Business Relations Manager for LA Talk Live. Did you know social media produces almost double the marketing leads of trade shows, telemarketing, direct mail, or even pay-per-click ads? And that about 46% of all online users count on social media when making that ever-important purchase decision. Hey, if you feel lost when it comes to social media, Top Tier Media can help you. Top Tier Media specializes in social media management and blogger outreach for beauty, fashion, health, and lifestyle brands. To learn more, go to www.toptiermedia.com. That's www.toptiermedia.com. Top Tier Media, the official social media marketing company of LA Talk Live and the Talk Live Broadcast Network. 
Joshua Lane, member of the board of directors of Dr. Anne Wigmore's Hippocrates Health Institute, Josh Lane was part of the Dr. Anne Wigmore team that brought wheatgrass, sprouts, and raw foods to a worldwide audience. And now the host of Here's to Your Health on LA Talk Live, Joshua Lane. We're back. Thank you for tuning in to this edition of Here's to Your Health on the LA Talk Live broadcast network. I'm your host, Joshua Lane. So this past weekend in Anaheim, the most important and most widely attended a natural foods convention uh, in the United States uh, occurred, and luckily we've had a bunch of uh, men and women who have been involved with that uh, trade show here today in the show. Uh, and we have Raoul Perfit, who comes in from Britain, who has tints of nature, which is a hair color uh, which people enjoy using, which has much better ingredients. Uh, Raoul, welcome to Here's to Your Health. Hi, Josh. Thanks for having me. Well, this is a new subject for me, uh, these uh, hair tints. So... Who buys these, and why do they want to buy them? Well, I think it's uh, an opportunity for ladies who are perhaps um, uh, money rich but time poor. Um, they're the people who are looking for something more alternative. Um, they are the shoppers for Whole Foods and that, that kind of market. Um, but it's really someone who's looking for a health-conscious beauty product. Um, for many years, uh, hair colors have been sold to ladies that maybe are not as uh, safe and as effective as they, they should be. Um, and really the, the uh, quality of the hair after the colouring has been affected by that. So what we've, what we've tried to develop is a product that's uh, safer, uh, better for you health-wise, but also a better performing product. All righty. So obviously we want to look great look and great. we want our hair to be healthy. Absolutely. Now, now this might be controversial. Some people might not agree with Raul, some of your thinking. No problem. What is it in your tints of nature that you feel is desirable and what do you leave out that you feel is potentially problematic or is definitely problematic? Sure. Okay. Well, uh, absolutely, uh, ammonia is a, is a problem with hair color. There's no ammonia in your problem? No ammonia in the hair color. And what does the ammonia do? It just rips the uh, hair apart? Yeah, ammonia swells the hair shaft and it shatters the natural pigment in the hair. And you have to replace that with a, a synthetic pigment. So the, the issue there is that it swells and it's very difficult to reduce that swelling. People, ladies will often say after they've colored their hair, their hair feels thicker or fuller. Well, that's actually damage. So what you don't... Really? Yeah, really? absolutely. Oh, see, oh. So what happens, the cuticle is opened, but it's not closed. And with a cuticle, it's, protect, it's a protective layer. It's like a scale on your, on your hair. Uh -huh. um, now, that protects from UV, it protects from environment, it protects from heat. Now, anyone who's, well, in Los Angeles, absolutely walk in the sun, your cuticles open and you're damaging the inner core, the color of your hair. Really? So, absolutely. Oh, I did not know. So, what you're, what you're trying to do with a hair color is to, you have to open the cuticle, but to a minimum amount to get the maximum amount in. So, it's a compromise between opening the cuticle very wide and damaging it and opening it enough to allow the pigment in to, to color your hair. I see. All righty. Um, I guess the, the, the other key difference is we're using organic ingredients. Uh, it's up to 60% in the hair color. Um, and the base of the color... And what does that mean exactly, organic ingredients? So we're looking at organic chamomile, organic comfrey, grapefruit seed, uh, aloe vera, uh, really as a protecting agent. For Those the actually sound like good ingredients. Absolutely. Um, and the key one really to me is chamomile, um, where it, it uh, adds a protective layer to the scalp. Really? Um, and, and it's antioxidant as well. Uh, when you're dealing with hair color, you do have to deal with extra oxygen. Um, some people call it peroxide and get scared about that, but basically it's H2O2. So it's oxygenated water, um, but it has a free radical element. So uh, neutralizing that free radical element is very important. And that's what people say. They, they, they could, they, they'd say my head itches or my head tight, uh, scalp feels tight. So you're, you're working against that. Um, but the, the key to the condition of the hair is the fact that it's an oil based uh, hair color. Uh, it's a soy oil base, and there's nothing else in the world that, that uses that particular product so, or ingredient. So that's where you get the condition, and, and I guess the, um, the beauty of the product is it, it allows the hair to feel as it used to before it was colored. And how did you first get involved with... <laughs> Your company, Tins of Nature. Were you a chemist? Were you a hairdresser? Uh, you yeah, well, it's, it's a common. I was actually a herbalist. Um, oh, my, herbalist. My, my, oh my, my grandfather was a herbalist. My father was in the herbal uh, business in the UK. Um, so I grew up um, with herbs all around me, um, but went into the more uh, originally medicines and essential oil. 
in in the sort of late 80s. Um, but I had an opportunity when a friend of mine who was a hairdresser um, had come, had come to me and said. I've actually had to give up hairdressing because he's, he had such a reaction to hair color. His right. lymph was swelling up. His this hands. happens a lot, doesn't it? Absolutely. Yes, it does, right? Absolutely. A lot of contact dermatitis, a lot of skin problems. The fact that they're breathing ammonia gas. Can't be a good thing. It can't be can't a good be, thing. Be Absolutely. Good I mean, it dissolves back in the water and your your eye and obviously causes uh, right. damage. No, it's definitely not a joke. It's bad. No, yeah. it's it's serious. Um, so he came to me and said, look, I'm having to give up my profession. Um, but with your background, Raoul, is there something we can do to make a more healthy, more natural, more uh, more gentle uh, right. product? So this was sort of uh, 20 odd years ago, early 90s. Um, and we set out uh, to sort of uh, do some research. Uh, obviously, I brought my herbal uh, um, hat on, if you like, and he brought his hairdressing hat. Uh, and in 1994, uh, we launched Tints of Nature. Um, so it's it's not a new product in terms of uh, development of the product. Nice. Uh, it evolves obviously all the time um, but it's a long-standing product that has come from a basis of health and hair it's not where maybe a larger company is reversing uh, reverse engineering a traditional hair color trying to make it more natural so the, the, the whole premise of the product was how can we do this gently effectively has to work it has to make the hair color change obviously because that's what the lady's buying um but how can we do this in a more gentle way um and not, larry so uh i'm sorry uh raul uh bring the bring the other boxes on yeah, camera sure, put, sure. put them on camera sure. so you have a variety of hair colors absolutely yep. and uh women and i guess frankly men as well uh, would yep. be interested in yep. these hair colors absolutely and so i actually get these kind of colors if i put it in my hair is that it i get these colors um, you could certainly, uh, yes, it covers 100% grey hair. Um, it covers, um, it will give a blonde, it will give a, a, a brunette, um, redheads. Um, you've got the whole range. We have a highlighting kit for for, for dark lady, uh, haired ladies who want to go lighter. Um, I, I would guess, uh, well, I know for sure that um, the majority of the the hair colour uh, business is about covering grey, um, for, for certainly for ladies, um, and that's where we are most effective because grey hair is actually very re difficult to colour. It's quite resistant. Really? Yeah, absolutely. What the, the 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 melamine uh, melamine shrinks in the hair, um, which actually creates a moisture loss, uh, reducing the protein levels. So what you get is a hardening of the hair. So oh. the fact that it's an oil base and it softens the, the cuticle and the hair shaft, you actually get a better effective um, grey coverage as well. Uh, I think the first question we always get asked is, can it cover grey? Um, and if, if it didn't cover grey, we wouldn't be in business, to be, to be frank. Um, the second one is, can you do a red? And yes, we have a reds. And the third one is, can you go blonde? So we've covered all the bases. All right, so <laughs> this is something I, I know Zippo about. No, sure. But I do know that natural hair colours are a big item in the natural food stores. Absolutely. People really are looking for those. Absolutely. So let me just talk about, let's talk about business and market sure, share. Sure. What percentage of the hair color business is the natural foods guy's approach, your approach, vis-a-vis, sure. -vis, I don't know, Revlon, whoever, I don't know. Yeah, so, the, the, the big, the big yeah, guys. The big yeah. guys, yeah. Uh, well, the, the, the U.S., the, the home, home hair color market is worth $2 billion. Oh, it's a very good size. It's a, it's a huge mm -hmm. size. The uh, latest figures for the natural set um, – would be between 15 and 20 million dollars okay so you guys have room, a lot of room for growth so absolutely um and tints of nature accounts for about 30 uh, percent of the u.s natural color market so you, you have a very big operation going. yes i mean we've been in the u.s now for 10 years so it, it's certainly been a growing uh, business we've we've now in whole foods we're in sprouts we're in most of the main um retailers excuse me so being in whole foods yeah. whole foods is a fantastic operation absolutely. nationwide yeah. they do a first class job and to get into Whole Foods, that's really validation that the product is a quality product absolutely. and that it works. Otherwise, absolutely. they just wouldn't carry the product. No, absolutely. And when we first came to uh, the, the exhibition, um, 2004, I think it was, um, we had a lot of good meetings, but I could tell they were actually just developing the idea. And hair color was quite new to them. Yes. Uh, it was a new sector. And really, what we tried to introduce to Whole Foods, which they actually took on board, was it's about developing the category. Because it's very important that the shopper who's buying organic food, um, vitamins, supplements, uh, skin care, but they were still buying a traditional hair color from CVS or on right. these other guys. So converting that consumer who's already shopping in the natural set to a hair color was the challenge. Uh, and we were a big believer that it's it's not about offering one or two. It's offer, about offering a range and about offering a choice. So Yes, you have to have... Uh 
How many do you have in general? About how many do you have? Well, there's 24 permanent colors. You have 24 permanent, 24 colors. permanent colors. That's eight, a lot of colors. Eight, yes, a lot of color. Uh -huh. um, there's eight semi-permanent. So if you if you really an introductory to, to hair color, so it's a, it's a safe option. You can wash it out if you don't like the color. So that oh, that's really semi-permanent. Well. Semi semi-permanent. I yeah. I can put it in tonight. Yep. And then. If on Monday I think ah, I'm going to wash yeah. that out, I can yeah. wash it out yeah. on Monday. Uh -huh. It gives you about six washes. So if you really gave oh, six you, washes, yeah, yeah. So you get a, you get a, a temporary effect, but it's a really good opportunity for people to try it and give you confidence in the product because it, it, it is a big step. Changing hair color brands is a, is a big step for for ladies. So that's a really good way of introducing the product. Uh, and then there's a shampoo uh, care range um, that just help maintains the, the hair color uh, uh, through the through the period of six weeks. So a permanent color would last six to eight weeks, depending six, on how you. Six to eight weeks, and yeah. then after six or so weeks, the roots are starting to grow and gray. Is that it? Okay. Absolutely. So six, you get a regrowth. Six after to eight that. weeks. Yeah. So it, it's a, a it's eighteen ninety nine. Uh, typical R, um, RRP we call it. I think you call it uh, something else, but uh, retail price. Um, would and that be lasts me for six about yeah. six to eight weeks. Yeah. And that's about six to eight weeks. And the beauty from a, uh, a, a user's point of view is that that's, they, they pretty much know that that's what they've got to spend. Um, it's a, a quality product uh, for a, a, a reasonable price. Um, it's not going to be the cheapest on the market because it, it, from the ingredients it can't be. But compared with what you would pay in a salon, you could be looking at 150, 200 dollars for a hair color. Right. So it's it's it, it to me isn't ma it's the opportunity or to get a quality product that you can use at home and in your in your comfort of your own home. And if you don't have the time, you're working, you're doing a lot of shifts. Um, it's a it's a, it's an easy opportunity rather than going to a salon for two or three hours. And what is the What's the methodology here if I'm going to put this hair color in my hair? What do I do? What do I have to do? Right. The first thing, it is a complete kit. So inside each box, you've got a, a, wash, a clarifying shampoo, which prepares the hair. I wash my hair first. With this wash your hair first, which is a different approach to, to mainstream hair color. But the, re the reason behind that is there's so many styling products out there that have silicone, and silicone coats the hair. So you need to remove silicone first. So you prepare the hair with a clarifying shampoo. Okay. You then mix the two products, give it a shake. Uh, and start applying at the roots and working through the ends of the hair. I use a little brush on it. Uh, there's a there's a little nozzle. Uh, oh. We do supply a bowl and a brush kit as well for the, for those who are a bit more experimental and want to mix colours. But it's a nozzle uh, application. When when the two products are mixed together, they form a gel, uh, which allows the product to flow, um, but it won't drip. And that's important, obviously the dripping, uh, because again, ladies get concerned about dripping down their face. Um, so it's a non-drip right. gel. Right, right, right. Um, it doesn't stain the skin. Which is a, another big plus Probably against big plus, yeah. um, against ammonia color. They get a, a very bad uh, <laughs> stain around the, the scalp. Um, which, so, we, which aesthetically you wouldn't want that. No, yeah. it's, and but from a health point of view, what, what you're doing is creating a, a raised pH, which opens the cuticle, but that also opens the skin. So that is being absorbed into the to the scalp. So that's a cause of reaction and obviously concern in terms of how much you is absorbing into yes. the body. Yes. So immediately you've minimised that risk. Um, you then go through about a half an hour to 35 to 40 minute uh, development time. Um, so you, you sit there with a, uh, you know, a towel on your head. Towel on your head, right. Towel on your head, have a cup of tea, um, you know, have a walk around. Uh, and then inside the box again, there's a shampoo for after and a conditioner. So you rinse the color off, you would then shampoo, and then you condition, and the process is finished. So you're probably talking about a 45 to one hour total processing time. And then as soon as that, in that one hour processing time, then... You look in the mirror and think, okay, my hair looks good now. I'm yep. good for six or eight weeks. Yeah, absolutely. Um, obviously, we'd recommend you a, a good shampoo, um, Tints Nature shampoo, but also a good quality sulfate-free shampoo. What 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 you don't want to do is uh, spend time and effort creating a beautiful hair color and go and use a very, very aggressive, uh, uh, cheap shampoo. So a good quality shampoo. Um, and then a uh, good quality color. shampoo yeah. has what ingredients? Well, you're looking for sulfate free, essentially. Okay. You're looking for something that doesn't have salt or sulfates because uh, salt breaks the keratin bonds in the hair and does damage to hair color and your hair. Um, quite frankly, it's, it's not good for the hair full stop. The reason people use salt in cosmetics in shampoos is it makes it a thicker product. So it feels like a quality product. Oh, I see. But if it's got salt in there or NaCl, they'll sometimes disguise it with sodium chloride. They'll, it'll read on the inky list. Um, that's a not, not a good product to look at in, in your shampoo. So sulfate-free, gentle shampoo. Um, sometimes baby shampoos are quite good. Um, but uh, it's, it's really about maintaining the quality of the cuticle of the hair because if that cuticle opens, 
the color's going to fade, and that's that's obviously crucial. So you first, your product first came out about 1990, you said in Britain. In UK, yeah, we, we launched in 94 in the UK, predominantly in the health food uh, market. Um, some some uh, pharmacies with a natural like set. Booths, or something, how um, no, uh, more department store style. Um, so independent pharmacies um, where they had a interest in more natural. Mm-hmm. Um, but health stores like Holland and Barrett uh, and chains uh, similar to Whole Foods, but not on the same scale as Whole Foods. Obviously, in the UK, they're much smaller. Um, and then we started exporting sort of late 90s to Europe. Uh, and as I say, in 2002, we started selling to the to the US. And does the herbal market? So your dad is, is your dad still practicing? He, he still he still develops uh, herbal medicines. Yeah, he still he still produces herbal medicine. Yeah. And so you see this kind of as an adjunct to that. It's just it just more natural therapeutics. So Absolutely. Words, people want to. People have their own aesthetic judgment as to how they wish to look. Absolutely. We all have our, our look. Sure. And uh, so if people want to color the hair. You hope to make that they can do it in a way that uh, doesn't poison themselves. Absolutely. I think it's it's a natural step. And it, it, uh, to be fair, it is probably the last step on the chain. That, that food supplements. Uh, oh, is that it? You see, is yeah. the last step? That's uh, interesting. Well, I think mm-hmm. I think it's okay. a difficult decision for some people to change their hair color. Right. And if you if you're using a product for a long time, it's it's quite a difficult decision. But once they make the change, we get a repeat business, which is fantastic because they realize the difference that the product can make. Um, but to me, it's it's about a, a step in the right direction from a health point of view. Um, it's about minimizing the chemicals. It's about not using products you don't need to create a hair color. The big guys, uh, the L'Oreal's, the Wellers, they will tell you you need ammonia to make a permanent hair color. It's it's not true. You do not. We wouldn't have been doing it for 20 years if that was true. So they they will do it because it's easier and cheaper and, and quicker, but there are better and softer and more gentle alternatives on the market. Uh, for those of you just tuning in to this edition of Here's to Your Health on the LA Talk Live uh, broadcast network. We're chatting with Raoul, the president of Tints of Nature, uh, originally uh, manufactured in Britain and now in the United States. How has the response been to the hairdressers that you've worked with? Hairdressers, I think, like to be progressive. You know, they, they love fashion. They love uh, being hairdressers. Absolutely. So have they embraced this thinking, yeah, this is better? Well, they have. And in fact, we have a sister brand that is developed just for the hairdressing market, oh. which again is in the US uh, as well. Um, so it's, what, guys, what brand that is? It's Organic Color Systems. It's right. uh, known as. And that's yeah. only sold to the hairdressers? Only sold to hairdressers. Right. It's a bigger range. It, it does a few more things than, than Tints of Nature because obviously a hairdresser has those training skills. Right. But essentially, the color formulation is the same. And the feedback from salons is, again, it's not so much the health that their angle; it's more the performance and the the, the quality of the hair. They like the colors. They get real good colors. They love the reds. They love the fact that it doesn't fade. The fact that you don't get lift from ammonia, which causes a yellowing effect. Um, you just oh, get a, a, a more gentle approach. And and bear in mind, a hairdresser can be doing seven or eight colors a day. That's a right. lot of product that they're breathing. That's a lot of contact on on their skin. And as I say, going back to how we started, that's why my friend uh, Stephen couldn't cut cut hair anymore, not let alone color, because he just could not touch the hair that had been colored. Now, so, excuse me. So now, now this is a this is this problem's been widely reported. Yeah. And do you find that even the real young 21 year hairdressers you're talking to? That they acknowledge this now. There's not a machismo thing. They don't, or, or they just think, no, no, we, we think you're wrong. I, I, I think the the, 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 the really recently qualified are, are yet to discover. But the, the they ones, don't talk about it in, in, in school. They don't. They don't. They, give, they, don't they are them. starting to. It, it's actually in the UK. It's really improving because they've realised they actually have adopted our training in some of the schools because huh. there's a more gentle way of doing things. But it's it's difficult to break that training cycle. Um, however. When you get into your 30s and 40s, and you've been doing it for 10, 15 years, right. then they realize. So our job now is to take that generational step back and say, guys, you can do this a better way. It's, you don't have to put up with what you've been putting up with. Um, so, yes, it, it may be a little bit easier for the, the, the older generation to understand. But the young guys, I think the youngsters are, are perhaps more aware of the more natural alternatives, but perhaps they don't apply it to a hairdressing um, theme. They probably understand the product in, in Whole Foods and they can they, they know there's other products available, but they see professional products as a different uh, uh, category. Mm-hmm. But really, it's one and the same. Um, so, yeah, absolutely. I mean, we have 3,000 salons in the U.S. using the product now. Oh, that's very so successful. It's a, it's, a, it's a big success, yeah. And people go to, to the uh, salon because uh, – 
they can put in subtleties in the hair color that at home you really can't because you get like you get like one color, right? But you, at the salon you, uh, you can get a bunch yeah, of colors. You right? can, you can, you can mix these colors. Uh -huh. um, and there, there are two distinct categories. There are those who will do color at home and very rarely will go to the salon. They'll go for a haircut. Right. But and there's the ones who will always go to the salon for hair color, and they don't tend to change. There's a little bit of switch when you have a, a an, an economic situation oh, yeah, right. when the the money you know comes tight. The alternative is that they will take a tints of nature to a salon and ask the hairdresser to apply it, and that's quite common. Oh, so, I see. So and the hairdressers they, will do that. They will do that. Yeah, absolutely. Um, uh, they will do that uh, if they. They want to keep the client obviously happy, um, but also it's a great way to introduce a product that they then ask for in a professional um, format. So it, it gives you cross-fertilization on, on both sides of the business. Right. Now, since I am really a very new to all this, sure. what are the ingredients that you've decided that are not a great choice for the quality of the health sure. of the hair or the scalp yeah. that you've dropped? So what, what, what do you do not have again? No ammonia. No ammonia. No resorcinol, which is a pigment, which is a very aggressive um, cancer-causing pigment, um, can irritate the scan. And it's, but it's allowed to be used in products. It, it is allowed in to be used in States. certain percentages. And in fact, in Europe, it does have a warning. It will say. What's that called again? Resorcinol. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it'll it'll say contains resorcinol, and it will say please test for allergic reactions. Now it's important to say that we always say recommend a skin test with all hair color. It doesn't matter how gentle or natural people can react. They can react to soy, they can react to, to proteins. Right. So a patch test on the inside of the arm is very important. Patch Even test meaning you put a little dab of it on? Little, little dab, t 48 hours, um, wash it off, and you're there. If you get a reaction, tradition most of the time it's within 20 to 30 minutes. So you get a little red bump? Yeah. If you get a raised skin, then obviously you're reacting. Mm -hmm. um, quite often there's problems with tattoos that can cause then the reactions with hair colors. So it's not Wait, always... you're saying if I... If I already have a tattoo here and I put something on it, react or just tattoos no, in tattoo general? No, tattoo generally, yeah. So, um, so tattoos in general are not really a smart move health-wise? Not really. I mean, right. they do use a, a chemical called PPD, uh, which is also uh, what causes, uh, which gives you brown hair color. So the combination of excess PPD from a tattoo and then a hair color can cause reactions. Oh, so that's why we, in fact, now in Europe, we have to say, if you've had a henna tattoo, please make sure you test for hair color. Um, and the trouble oh, even is, just a henna tattoo. Well, the trouble Does is, it have to be it, a permanent. It could be either. Well, uh, unfortunately, there's a, a a market of henna tattoos that don't really contain henna. They are branded as henna tattoos, but they can, do contain permanent pigment. So you can that be doesn't very careful. sound good. It's not good. Oh my goodness, it, it's not good, and it's very difficult to regulate the the, the industry. Um, good tattoo uh, parlors will have a licensing system and will actually insist on you have a patch test before you have a tattoo. The ones that, I did not know this. Yeah, the ones that are not so ethical will just put you in the, the chair and, and get on with it. And that's unfortunately the same with hairdressing. In hairdressers, you should actually take a product away, wait for 48 hours and come back and have the hair color. The reality is doesn't people, happen it so doesn't much. happen. So again, with a home hair color, you've got a your luxury of your own home. You can do your test and we give them a 100% guarantee. If someone says they have a problem, we give them a full refund and take the product back. Um, 99.9% .9 of the time, we're okay. But there is still a very, very small percentage of people who react to hair color. Right. Um, so going back to the original question, yes, ammonia, um, uh, resorcinol. Uh, and the key is the actual blend of the product because hair is colored by pH change. So the higher the pH, the more rapid the hair color change. So oh, a traditional ammonia-based hair color will be pH 11 and 0.5, very, very alkaline. Yes. We're working on 8.5. So that's why it's a more gentle and a slower process, but that's not causing damage to the hair. Gotcha. So that's the real key. It's, it's the way the base uh, product, which is the soy, the oleic acid, um, is mixed together and rapeseed uh, oil as well, is put together to, to maintain a pH level that works, but not that swells the hair. And on your uh, tints of nature, mm -hmm. if someone's going to do it, say, let's just say every eight weeks. So in other words, a person can color their hair six times a year. Yep. Right. And they'll be good. There's yep. no, no problem. Absolutely. No problem. Absolutely. No problem at all. And from a retailing point of view, um, it, it's, it's, a, it's a wonderful product. This is how Whole Foods have generated you know, a, a big category for them because it's a repeating business. Sure. Um, once the, the person's made the switch and loves the product and they love the color, they're going to keep coming back. So not only is it good for, for the health of the consumer, you've got a good business model from a point of view of the actual retailer. 
So men, so you, you mentioned women, but both men and women use your product, Tins of Nature. Absolutely. I th I th obviously, the way it's packaged, you can yeah. see, it's designed for the lady to buy. 75% of the shoppers in a natural uh, market are ladies, are but we know they do buy it for their men. <laughs> right. uh, and certainly the um, Indian uh, market in the UK, uh, Indian men, uh, Asian men, color their hair a lot uh, and uh, they are big users um, but again it's the it's the ladies who, who buy the, the color for them yeah we're all doing we're wrapping up the interview sure. give us your contact information okay uh, you can go on to uh, the web which is www.tintsofnatureusa.com uh, you can look up the product you can buy online also also you can buy through whole foods and major major retailers um, and uh, I'd love to hear from you. Yeah. Well, well, thank you very much. Thank you. Fun. Thank you. And Joshua. informative. Great. Thanks very much. You've been listening to Here's to Your Health on the LA Talk Live broadcast network. I'm your host, Josh Lane. We're going to take a short break, and we'll be right back after these important messages. We know there are many choices in internet radio, and the staff and host of LA Talk Live would like to thank you for choosing the internet's hottest destination for the most eclectic sound and invigorating talk. This is LA Talk Live. We are more than just talk. Young Connection, your one stop connection for all your graphic design and commercial printing needs. Young Connection is a full service printing and media design company dedicated to providing the highest level of customer service and satisfaction. Young Connection provides swift response and rapid turnaround services for banners, brochures, business cards, letterheads, church bulletins, funeral programs, flyers, logo design, posters, and much, much more, all at an affordable price. Young Connection, the official printing company of LA Talk Live. Give them a call at 310-491-3336. That's 310-491-3336. Or visit their website at www.youngconnection.com. That's www.youngconnection.com. Young Connection Printing and Media Services, proud sponsors of LA Talk Live, where it's more than just talk. It started out like a totally normal day. I love you. I mean, I guess I was a little sweaty and I was definitely sore. I thought I had gas. Turns out I was having a heart attack. Heart disease is the number one killer of American women. So now I take care of myself and tell the other women in my life to do the same. Make it your mission to save your life and the lives of the women you love. Find out more from the American Heart Association at GoRedForWomen.org. Hey, everybody, it's your man Sabir Bay back on your airwaves, inviting you to join us every Tuesday, 3 p.m. Pacific Standard Time on the Sabir Bay Show, discussing history, law, and hip hop. Every Tuesday, 3 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, the Sabir Bay Show, exclusively on latalklive.com. You also can catch us on iTunes Radio and RB, Live 365, Radio Flag, and now Stitcher Radio. Or watch us and listen directly at latalklive.com. Reality Radio, handcrafted for your listening pleasure. This is LA Talk Live, and we are more than just talk. Joshua Lane, member of the board of directors of Dr. Anne Wigmore's Hippocrates Health Institute, Josh Lane was part of the Dr. Anne Wigmore team that brought wheatgrass, sprouts, and raw foods to a worldwide audience. And now the host of Here's to Your Health on LA Talk Live, Joshua Lane. We're back. Thank you for tuning in to this edition of Here's to Your Health on the LA Talk Live broadcast network. I'm your host, Joshua Lane. My next guest is the wellness expert, Diana Stabo. Is that right? Stobo. Stobo, I almost had that right. Diana Stobo has Naked Bliss, has another book as well. I met Diana at the Raw Food Expo at the uh, Westlake Hyatt uh, three or four weeks ago, which was a very well attended a raw food, uh, I use the word symposium, a lot of lectures, a lot of uh, companies there. And Diana, you had a booth there and you were lecturing there? I was actually the MC of both evenings. Oh, I did not realize that. Yeah. I was the MC. 
Yeah, I won a couple awards. Not terribly proud of them, but I was the funniest and the sexiest raw woman out there. <laughs> well, that seems like a good thing to win. Good for you. Good for you. I thought the funniest part was that I was the sexiest raw woman. <laughs> well, that's good too. It's also very nice. Yeah. Yeah. And of course, eating a lot of raw foods, it'll put color in your cheeks. But who wants green cheeks? Exactly. Thank you very much. It's an ancient joke. I like that joke very much. <laughs> and how did you get involved with uh, eating carefully? Well, about 10, gosh, 12, 50. How old am I now? I just had a birthday. Um, I healed myself by eating raw food. I was actually very sick. I had thyroid issues. I was precancerous. I had uh, ch chronic fatigue syndrome, all the little things that start to ail you just before you, you know, combust. And yes. and I just about combusted and I had, you know, a choice, go into the medical and take more pills or heal myself. So, so you just you were feeling rotten and you suddenly you had a couple of ways you could go. Now, what made you go the idea that food is a healing tool? What made you think about that? Well, I as a as a young girl, I tried. Um, I was very experimental. I was a biology major. I was very into. I wanted to be a, a doctor. So I was very into how the body works and how food affects your body. Became and I'm also a chef. So it became how does the food affecting my body? And the more I learned, the more I realized how powerful that was. Mm -hmm. Of course, this isn't, isn't you know new information. It's ancient wisdom, but we had forgotten it so much that we had to reestablish it into our bodies and say, oh, information. Here we go. And I started putting good information into my body and my body began to heal. And as soon as you put the good information and all the good stuff inside, all the bad stuff falls out. And so I filled myself up with delicious, wonderful, amazing raw foods, fresh water, smoothies, good minerals, and I healed myself. Was there any particular authors that you read or any particular healers that you bumped into who assisted you along the way? Well, I went through the Essene program with um, Dr. Cousins, uh, oh, Gabriel, Gabriel Cousins. Cousins. Oh, I see. Oh. Yeah. One of my, I always, I always say he's my best father figure. I love the man and he was so great. In fact, when I finished the program, one of the things he said was he looks at all the Essenes and he says, your job now is to go teach what you know. And it was such a powerful message for me. I took it, you know, with full force. Um, I'm also a trained chef, started out as a French chef, traditional classic French chef. And then when I healed myself, I had to turn all that nutrition into raw food. And it's right. it's a chemistry thing. Yes. And I'm very good at it because the food I make tastes good and it right. hits the palate in the right way where people don't feel like they're just suffering through something. They actually eat it and go, I want more. So you trained years ago with uh, heavy cream sauces and stuff? I actually worked with uh, Julia Child and uh, oh my Wolfgang goodness. Puck. Oh, my goodness. Um, not, com you know, not right hand in hand, but actually right next to them uh, several times when they came to Cornell years ago. Cornell University? Yes, where I got my graduate degree. Yeah. Years and years and years ago. <laughs> because I know that Julia Child at one time was really anti-natural foods. I remember as a younger man seeing broadcasts of Julia Child in which she really went after natural foods guys. And I thought to myself, Julia, you, you, you're you completely wrong here. You're looking pretty foolish. But I guess she was from like, not even my mom's generation. She was my grandmom's generation. So she had a different thing. She knew what she knew. We all know what we know about food. But Julia Child was a pain in the neck there for quite a while. She she is a pain in the neck. She was a pain in the neck. But actually, what's so ironic is that she was very natural. I mean, she was natural into dairy and into wheat and into the meats. But she was also a French chef, and she learned how to cook in France. So the foods in France are non-GMO. I mean, we're in a totally Especially different of those in that era. She, I mean, she learned to be a cook, what, in the, in the 50s, right? Exactly. It was a long time ago. And the joke you make about uh, her uh, is that, you know, she was not exactly a, a fruitarian. Uh, she's what we might call a <laughs> fermented fruitarian. She was a fermented, fermented fruitarian, <laughs> which I think is a great joke, uh, by the way. One of my buddies uh, years ago thought of that joke, and I, I think it's really true. So she, you know, drank a little bit too much, and she was she, maybe funny on camera, but probably in real life wasn't so funny. She was persnickety, yeah, definitely. But you know, just fun to watch and very engaging. And she, you know, she did her thing. So you got involved with being a French chef as a young woman because you just thought this just seems like an exciting profession. No, I actually had a knack for it. I ran, I opened catering businesses when I was younger. I literally, when I was in college, worked in a uh, health food store making all the food. Um, I don't know why At, near Cornell. Uh, no, that was actually down in San Diego at UCSD. Uh -huh. I, I had to pay my rent. So right. I, I got hired in a natural foods um, cafe and was making, at the time, bran muffins sweetened with pineapple and all mm -hmm. these things. And I created and soups and all that. And as soon as I left that company, um, they hired a professional chef and the company went downhill. 
Uh-huh. My food, so I knew that I was very good, and people hired me to do catering, and I just had a knack for food, but never really thought much about it, except that I liked to eat. Um, that's not true. I actually was more, more into it. I, I was very into trying, testing my body. I was a vegetarian for 10 years when I was young, until I went to Cornell, and they I took an international cuisine course, and we, we actually uh, spit-roasted a boar, a wild boar. And that sounds I, cool. Oh, it was so cool. We actually brought the boar in. So, we, so they have a very widely, highly regarded hospitality degree that they offered Cornell. Is that what you were yeah, pursuing? Yes. Well, they actually had a very huge food department at the time. I don't know if they still do. I'm not sure that it's as um, renowned as it was then. Uh, but I remember eating the boar. I was reaching for the boar, and I said, I'm sorry, I'm a vegetarian. And the, the teacher looked at me and said, then you failed the class. Oh, dear. So I began oh, eating meat again. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> that was, that's very hardcore. <laughs> it was very hardcore. I'm like, hmm, meat, fail. Yeah. So um, anyway, so when I started to become ill, I realized that food was such a major component and people thought I was healthy anyway. And what's regarded as healthy nowadays uh, really isn't that healthy, but I yes. couldn't pinpoint it down to what it was. You know, I'm Persian, so I had a Mediterranean style diet uh, naturally, um, but it was the little things that I wasn't paying attention to, like the non-organic foods and the GMO right. foods right. and um, so you really had to break it down to the lack of mineralization and um, getting the toxins out of your body. So the first thing I do, I, my original book, um, I know you have my book here, but my original book is called Get Naked Fast. And it, it was written on the premise of stripping away the foods that weigh you down. Huh. Because we all want to feel good in our body naked. Right. Yes. Uh, and, you know, nothing would be better than to strip off your clothes before you get in the shower and, and not run from the mirror. We want to look. I have found that when you take a shower, it's better to have no clothes on. <laughs> I, I've discovered that. Yes, it's through a trial <laughs> right. and error. It's better. Just, it's better. Yeah, it's better. Yeah. But most of us duck. We're like, okay, ch- oh, in. Maybe nobody will see me. Um, so it's about looking good, feeling good, and stripping right. away the foods that weigh you down. And that was about not about what you're putting in your body, but what you're taking out of your body mm-hmm. first. And when you focus on taking the stuff out of your body that causes you to weigh down, you already begin to detox, whether you're eating raw foods or putting in minerals or not. And so that's the first step into getting healthy. Right. Well, that seems uh, – and that's uh, something that you you know is an important tool. I mean, a lot of people hearing the broadcast today have never thought of that. They just – they thought, no, I eat food. It's good and – you know, my food's fine, but you're telling us that indeed foods that are GMO foods, better to avoid those. Well, it, it, it's it's more than that. It's about, and I have this, I have the six no-nos. I call them the no-nos. It's the K-N-O-W, know your no's. Right. Know what they are, the, know the foods that are weighing you down, and then eliminate them or don't eat them as often. Seems fair. So yeah. it's dairy, wheat, meat, sugar, caffeine, and alcohol. These are the foods that weigh you down, and I'm going to add soy to that, but certain port, parts of it because it's highly processed in GMO. Um, but these are the six no-nos. Once you know the no's and you start eliminating them, you want to substitute what makes you happy because it's right. really important to put the foods in your body that make you happy. We like to enjoy our foods. It's part of life. Yes. So what would you eat instead of wheat? Well, there's so many wonderful um, ancient grains out there. You can use sprouted wheats, but you can also use other grains. And people are all... What other grains? Uh, well, spelt, amaranth, um, quinoa. I mean, these are all wonderful grains that we can put into our body. And brown rice. And brown rice. Um, that puts us in the gluten category, but people don't realize that the gluten issue is really not about gluten per se. It's about the overload of sugars and processed foods in our body. I see. So what they do is they tend to go from gluten to um, gluten-free, but it's still a processed food. So it actually affects the body almost worse than the original gluten. That's a very interesting premise. Yeah, and there's many articles and there's a lot of research done on that um, uh, to prove it. But people who eat gluten-free are just really putting a Band-Aid on the wound. So what we need to do is eliminate... um, just about everything that's weighing us down and slowly start adding it so we can test our body to figure out what really is the cause. There's a lot of discussion these past four or five years about people going gluten-free, which surprises me. I can never really guess view the future, but I see that the mainstream is kind of is talking about gluten as a, an issue. Uh, so do you like to recommend for your clients things like brown rice and millet, which naturally have no gluten, or are you more of the school of thinking that, no, no, the problem is the quality of the wheat now having been genetically modified, is promoting most of these problems or many of these problems. What's your thinking on that? Um, well, first of all, I try not to create any problems, and I try, try to create solutions. 
Mm -hmm. um, so I think when we start telling people all the problems, then it becomes bigger than something that they can control. That you know that could be true. That's actually that's that's a good teaching. To I agree with you. Yeah. Yeah. I, I th if I start telling people that there's GMO, then they then they start counting again and going, oh my God, now where do I go? And then they get angry and upset and fury, you know, just overwhelmed, and right. then they, they won't right. take the first step. So my first step is, yeah, stop stop eating processed wheat breads and go to sprouted grain breads. Uh, you know, stop eating. Uh, white rice, go to brown rice. You know, this is a good way to begin. Um, I don't like to overwhelm. And then as their body becomes to detox and they become more sensitive, then they they start eliminating the foods on their own. They explore. You know, that cure, sounds like a very good technique. That sounds like a very good idea. Yeah, yeah. I think that uh, most people are over over educated and overwhelmed. Mm -hmm. Um, they're and and really they're getting the improper information because scare tactics never work. It's about feeling good and doing what feels good. So. Um, Dairy. The only thing great about the gluten-free uh, and the gluten issues that have come out now is that everybody's forgotten about how bad dairy is. <laughs> right. So right. You know, they they were so freaked out about their gluten. Now they they want to. The truth is, they want to blame how they feel on something. And yes. so, if we can give it a name, then it it it, it compartmentalizes and everybody can function better. But in this but case, but also if I can say this, you know, some people. You know, we all know what we know. You can have people who can build bridges or paint paintings, but they never thought about food. And they think, no, I eat this food. It's good food. And I'm, it's good food. And, you know, why are you talking to me about eating something different? I'm, eat, I'm already eating food. They don't know. No, 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 no. Yeah, but the food, the Coca-Cola you're drinking, et cetera, you know, it's not necessarily a great choice health-wise. It might taste good. And people really, they've never heard that before. They just think, no, I never heard that before. Right. Do you get that all the time? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, you might really? My soda? Well, I drink Diet Coke. Right. Oh, well, that's even worse. Right. But they don't understand why, and so, and I, and I, I recognize the amount of information that's out there and where your audience is. It, it changes. Right. Some people are, some people know so much that they're living off of superfoods, and that's not a way to live either. They're literally popping packaged superfoods, goji berries, and and chocolate all day long, saying, "Oh, I'm alive, I'm alive." And I don't, I don't. <laughs> you were at the Raw Living Expo. Yeah. I looked around at some of these superfood junkies, and I got to tell you, they didn't look so healthy. There wasn't a well-rounded, uh, you know, health. They didn't have a healthy glow. They looked like goji berry and chocolate. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. That, 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 that's true. Uh, one thing I've been involved with the raw foods movement for a very long time, and sometimes people get involved with it who had been very sick before. Yes, yes. And they really managed to save their life with this move yes. towards fresher foods. Uh, Viktor Sklavinskis, the author of Love mm -hmm. Your Body and Survival into the 21st Century, who really was in his 1970s and 1980s and possibly early 1990s the most influential raw food teacher around until younger men like Dave Wolf and others uh, came forward. And I had the pleasure of studying with Kulvinskis for a long time. And uh, he was a real sick young guy. Yeah. He was Lithuanian, and the Nazis overran his uh, country and his village, and he lived in a displaced persons camp after the Second World War. So he had a very difficult early life. You know, he had a, a lot of bad stuff happen. Uh, and he had a lot of health problems. And right. he... Uh, Change them through uh, lifestyle. It's really, and in those days, people laughed. They thought, "Oh, that's absurd." But you know what? It, it just to to get a bit broader picture. It's more than food. Right. It's really what you said, lifestyle, right. and lifestyle includes happiness. Right. And when you start taking away the foods that are weighing you down, it takes a load off you. You become cognitively more focused. Mm -hmm. Your heart opens, your spirit rises. I mean, everything changes. You start feeling light and playful, and really your whole life changes. So it's not about what we're so worried about is, am I getting enough of this? Am I getting enough of this? Am I getting enough of this? Start by eliminating the stuff that's actually causing you grief, and then all the other stuff will kind of just naturally occur. Oh, well, that seems like good advice. Now let's talk about processed sugar. On this show, I try to talk about processed sugar. Give me your take on processed sugar. Anything processed is naughty, just naughty all day long. Um, we, you were talking earlier with someone about uh, uh, protein mm -hmm. and um, low glycemic and all that. Well, I think what we're having now is we're having a metabolic syndrome issue. Uh, we're so used to, our bodies have all gotten so used to processed foods and sugars that our cortisol levels, levels are raising and we're not getting grounded. We're not getting the right proteins. We're not getting enough proteins. We're not getting solid, even grain proteins, like even hemp, seed proteins. Um, so what's happening with processed sugars, you put it into our body. Our body can't process it. Processed sugar, our bodies can't process. So right. it literally right. goes in right. and causes stress and metabolic syndrome. It's, it causes it to shut down. 
And that's why one out of 10 Americans today are born with diabetes. I mean, that's a Oh, really? I did not know that. Oh, it's actually an uh, oh, economic wow. uh, study. So there's a socioeconomic wow. study, but yes. So we're actually creating diabetes in our DNA because of the amount of sugar we intake. It's nobody's fault. They don't know any better. It's this, this new um, generation has been eating processed foods for the last decade. Right. And to the extent that it's actually changed our DNA. Well, the beautiful really, thing. Really, you've actually read that as I've, a scientific study. I did not know that. That's actually very interesting. It's, it's scary, but it's uh, very interesting. Well, and so what we're doing with this raw foods movement is you don't have to be 100% raw. You don't even have to be 80% raw. If you can get 40 to 50% of your diet to be live produce, then you're already switching it back and reversing aging, re getting your DNA strands to the connectors to, to reshape so they stop connecting all the bad stuff together and start connecting all the good stuff together. I mean, we are literally changing. We're creating an evolutionary process here that we were going the wrong way, and now we need to go the right way. Well, that's very interesting information, Diana. And where can I get your book, by the way? Uh, well, Get Naked Fast and Naked Bliss are, gosh, they're in all bookstores, they're on Amazon, they're on my website, dianastobo.com. Um, I have tons of other books. They're all web books, they're all ebooks right now on dianastobo.com. Tons of information. Um, if you go to um, live.dianastobo.com, you can actually join, I have a membership program that, um, it's where you can talk to me and ask questions, and we can go through the process. And what, what I call personal coaching uh, calls, private access calls. In fact, I have one on Thursday, and anybody who goes becomes a member for you know a, a month. Uh, for a nominal like a dollar or something and you get to come in and see if you want to stay and then you can follow my program for a while and I get you, I, I've changed a lot of lives by teaching them and it's not about teaching them the tidbits of a superfood or a way of life it's about teaching them how to listen to their own body the most important thing is listening to your own body well, let me say that this subject is my favorite subject wellness food is a healing tool and you have very good insight why well, thank you it's very well stated what do you, what's your feeling on the use of alcohol? Well, um, <laughs> I like alcohol just as much as everybody else does, uh, but it is a poison in the body, and it goes into poison, and you have to decide uh, how, how and when you want to poison your body. Now, wine is a big issue because wine is a raw food. The problem is it has such so many sulfites. Like you know, I get we were just talking about this in the car. This thing under my eye. I had some wine this weekend. Wine will affect your body in a negative way. Would you say that's a problem with kidneys? Uh, oh, definitely. Uh, liver, liver, kidneys. Liver. All your organs have to filter the toxins. All your organs have to filter the breads, the glutens. It has to filter the sugars in your body. Your liver has over 150 functions, and if you're loading it up with too many things to do at one time, it's going to fail. And so everything, and once the liver starts to go down, the gallbladder starts to go down, the kidneys start to slow down, the spleen's worried about all this, so it goes down. And so you, you, you create a, a domino effect of things that just aren't going to work. And, and then people say, I don't feel good. Well, you don't feel good because you're putting too much stuff on your body. Uh, beer, beer is covered in yeast. It's literally like putting, you know, fermentation inside your body. I love beer. Nothing better than a beer after a long run, right? But as soon as you put it in, it's like puff the magic dragon. Poof. That's a nice way of putting swelling. But, um, you know, some of the distilled alcohols, they claim that, uh, vodka is the cleanest. Uh, you know, vodka is really just like, it's like drinking, rubbing alcohol, you know, probably the best one and the most cleansing and the most easily processed is tequila. And a lot of people, really? yeah, and actually people have a lot of hard time with it. But what's interesting about alcohol is every blood type and every uh, genetic background is predisposed to be able to process and filter certain types. And you'll find that scotch drinkers have a certain character type. Wine drinkers have a certain character type. Red and white wine drinkers have a, because they each process differently. I mean, that's there, very interesting. There's not one diet that is right for everybody. Right. And that's why the most important thing is you listen to your body. Problem is most of us have earphones on. We don't know how to listen. And the only way to actually start paying attention and hearing what our body's telling us is to strip away the foods that weigh you down. You must right. strip them away first so you can hear the music. And then your body starts talking to you and you become aware, oh, when I put this in, I have a reaction. When I put this in, I have a reaction. So you can start monitoring 
And then you can say, you know, wine doesn't bother me if I have it twice a week. But boy, when I have it three times a week, I'm a mess. You just become very aware. So you work with your clients because I have found that uh, you know people are very touchy about alcohol. Yes. And people, people and coffee. People are very touchy about a lot of things, but in alcohol, you know, people say, uh, okay, listen, you have no right to talk about alcohol. They just really. So I always <laughs> it's off limits. <laughs> I always uh, put alcohol discussion in with co- like a soda discussion or a candy bar. I say, no, it's all processed sugar, and it it does the processed sugar thing to your body. So you know, it costs you. You it might might be might be a social bridge. It's true. It might be fun, uh, but then the next day you think, oh, I feel I don't feel dead. The next day, no, I feel diminished. Right. I'm I'm foggy mentally. I, my gut hurts. I you know, exactly gas, and I don't feel very energetic, and I kind of kind of waste a day, a day and a half, especially as you get older. So so that's what you get when you consume a lot of processed sugar. So I try to put it in that direction because I find people really are touchy. People are touchy about everything. We all are very touchy, but people are touchy about alcohol. They say to me sometimes, you have no right to talk to me about alcohol because I, I do some discussion of that in my natural food store. And people, some people, so now I try to be very careful about that because I realize that's really the hot button issue that I see. There is nothing more personal than telling people that they're eating the wrong things. Yeah. That yeah. is like, and you might are. as well just strip them down. I mean, they do not like, which is why my, 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 which is why I work. There's no judgment. It's complete, no judgment, right? No judgment. It's yeah. completely meet you where you are. Right. I don't have the answers. I'm still figuring out the answers. Right. I'm constantly shifting and changing and I use my body as a Petri dish. What I do tell people is, um, let me do the work for you. Because you may not be able to dig yourself out of this. Mm-hmm. And I know my homeostasis. I know where I need to go. And I may be in a funk right now, but I know how to get myself out. Right. Let me test this and see what kind of reactions I have because I'm so sensitive. I, I, I swear God put me on this planet to be a Petri dish or test tube for or scientific experiment for other people to learn from. And I am. And I do it. You seem to have a real good sense of it. You know, some people, as they say, some people see their, their body as a temple. You, you obviously see your body as a temple. Mine's a test kit. <laughs> but some people see their body as an amusement park, exactly. which is a little bit, a bit more problematic yeah, for those yeah. individuals. But uh, yeah, that's, that's interesting. So I, I really like your insight, I, and I, you really do have a very nice way of, of explaining the subject. And I, since I do love the subject and since I'm pretty well read, you have a good sense of this. Thank you. Yeah, Thank it's my you. pleasure. I'm, I'm thrilled to have you on because on this show, on the LA Talk Live Broadcast Network, I need intelligent talk. And I'm getting it today. Exactly. I appreciate it. Exactly. Well, I, 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 I'm, I'm probably smarter than I look. Um, <laughs> but like I said, if you, if, if people can go to, if I may say, live, yeah. live.dianastobo.com, and it's specifically for you right now, um, that they can go and they can become a member and talk to me. Uh, I actually have a call on Thursday night, and they can actually ask personal questions about what's going on for them individually. That um, seems like a very smart thing. People need that. And then you hear other people ask questions too, right? And they, they learn from the other questions. It's such a great program. Yeah. Uh, we talk to them twice a month in my membership so that people can actually get you know the answers because they're, they're hearing, they're reading too much, they're hearing too much, and, and they get confused. And it's really about getting down to the bare bones. And I would ask you questions to find out what may be ailing you. You get a history, right? To get your history, exactly. Yeah, yeah history is terribly important. Now, there are many things to talk about, but... How do you counsel patients, uh, individuals, about the protein to use and how much protein to use and the frequency of protein? I mean, all these protein questions, which are, ter- are important. Okay, that's a very good question. It's one that I'm exploring right now. So I'm happy that you asked that because when I first went raw, um, you heard the whole thing. Where do you get your protein? Well, you don't get enough protein, the kind of protein you need in order to um, sustain healthy muscle and all that. In the right. beginning, when you go raw, you will find that your body is sleeker, you know, cellulite free, your muscles look toned, everything's great right. until you hit a certain point. Mm-hmm. And then your body starts to say, uh-oh, where'd your right. nails go? Your hair is falling out. Right. You're starting to get fluffy and fatty and right. you're getting belly. And you're like, and I, this happened to me. All of a sudden I was like, wait a second. So it ends up that I needed to have um, pr- my complete proteins in order to absorb the cortisol. Mm-hmm. It's it's like a balance. You've got the sugars, even in fruits, and then you've got your proteins. Uh, you could go for the fast route, which would be going back to animal proteins, getting um, you know solid eggs in. You can do uh, you know your meats, your fishes, and all that, or you can go to uh, really focusing on what you're putting in your diet, i.e., hemp seed, uh, perfect proteins, hemp seed, chia seed, uh, quinoa, 
Uh, you can get nutritional yeast. There's not a lot of perfect protein. And do you know what a perfect protein is as opposed to a um, incomplete protein? Me, so a perfect protein, a complete protein, has all nine essential amino acids. Um, fruits and vegetables have eight, seven, eight, seven, eight, seven, depending on which ones they are. Um, but they don't have all nine. So, for example, spinach has 49% protein. Kale has 42% protein, but it's not a complete protein. So when it, it goes inside your body, it's waiting for that extra amino acid to make a complete protein. If you're not doing a variety of foods, you're not getting that extra amino acid. That's why rice and beans go so well together mm -hmm. because each one has uh, eight, but they have a perfect mixture when mixed together. When it comes to like spinach, you want to make sure that you have citrus, vitamin C foods with it and so in order to get the perfect protein. But not everybody's doing it. The beautiful thing is that your body will hold on to that incomplete protein for 24 hours till it gets that last amino oh, acid. Really? Yeah, yeah, it's pretty smart. Our bodies are, you know, really intelligent. But if we're not doing enough variety, we're not getting enough protein. So the best way to do that is to add your chia seeds, add your hemp seeds. Hemp is going, growing so fast. It's going to be the next wave. Uh, you think so? You think hemp is a terribly important, useful food? I think it's a, I think it's a very, it's, it's a useful food. Mm -hmm. You know, I think they're all useful foods. And that's the big mistake is everybody goes, oh, hemp, now it's, that's the answer. And so they start ingesting hemp and nothing else. Right. Oh, chia, there's the answer. I'm going to, kombucha, that's the answer. And then they get so crazed. That's true. Yes, they they let that. everything else right. fall. Because nobody wants to think and nobody wants to work that hard. But, you know, and they don't have to work that hard until their body starts to fail. And right. then they go, something's right. happening to me. I mean, I do the same thing. I was stuck on a very simple diet for very long. And in my body, you went through hormonal changes and I got a backlash and I had to, I had to refocus and pay attention. So the only thing I know is that now as a Petri dish, I get to teach what I'm learning Sure. About protein. So pro complete protein is essential. We don't need as much as they say, but we do need it. Right. Diana Stobo, this has been very interesting. Once again, how can we get in contact with you? Uh, go to dianastobo.com. That's my website. Like I said, live.dianastobo.com. Get in. Talk to me on Thursday night, and I'll tell you how to go from there. Well, thank you very much. It's been fun. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You've been listening to Here's to Your Health on the L.A. Talk Live broadcast network i'm your host joshua lane we're going to take a short break and we'll be right back after these important messages thank you for tuning in to la talk live Reality Radio, handcrafted for your listening pleasure. This is L.A. Talk Live, and we're more than just talk. Stay tuned. It started out like a totally normal day. I love you. I mean, I guess I was a little sweaty, and I was definitely sore. I thought I had gas. Turns out, I was having a heart attack. Heart disease is the number one killer of American women. So now I take care of myself and tell the other women in my life to do the same. Make it your mission to save your life and the lives of the women you love. Find out more from the American Heart Association at GoRedForWomen.org. Journey Sisters is an organization that embodies and captivates women from all our membership includes 44 women that are constantly growing in the areas of personal development and community involvement. Monthly, we offer free leadership classes at McCade's Restaurant. Journey aims to inform women in the areas of heart disease and HIV and AIDS. Experience the journey now by logging into www.journeymosaicinc.com. Toll free 888 906 5519 Journey with no excuses. Hey, everybody, it's your man Sabir Bay back on your airwaves, inviting you to join us every Tuesday, 3 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, on the Sabir Bay Show, discussing history, law, and hip hop. Every Tuesday, 3 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, the Sabir Bay Show exclusively on latalklive.com you also can catch us on itunes radio and r&b live 365 radio flag and now stitcher radio
or watch us and listen directly at latalklive.com. Reality Radio, handcrafted for your listening pleasure. This is LA Talk Live, and we are more than just talk. Hi, this is Dr. Levi, your fitness doctor, making a personal house call, inviting you to join me Wednesday at 10 a.m. Pacific for my all-new show, The Dr. Levi Show. Join us as we discuss fitness, health, and well-being, including emotional and spiritual health. So don't forget to tune in to The Dr. Levi Show every Wednesday at 10 a.m. Pacific, exclusively on LATalkLive.com and the Talk Live Broadcast Network. You can also catch us on iTunes, Radio R&B, or watch us on Ustream.tv, or catch us on the Live 365 Network. And now on Radio Flag and Stitcher Radio, reality radio handcrafted for your listening pleasure. This is L.A. Talk Live, and we are more than just talk. Joshua Lane, member of the board of directors of Dr. Anne Wigmore's Hippocrates Health Institute, Josh Lane was part of the Dr. Anne Wigmore team that brought wheatgrass, sprouts, and raw foods to a worldwide audience. And now the host of Here's to Your Health on LA Talk Live, Joshua Lane. We're back. Thank you for tuning in to this edition of Here's to Your Health on the LA Talk Live broadcast network. I'm your host, Joshua Lane. It's been our great uh, pleasure this week to have uh, some of the uh, men and women who are wellness uh, thinkers and educators who were at the Anaheim Trade Show uh, this past weekend here uh, on the show today. And we have Dr. Michael Smith, who is an MD, who has a new book out called The Supplement uh, Pyramid. And Dr. Smith uh, lectured at the trade show in Anaheim this weekend. Dr. Smith, welcome to Here's Tree Health. Well, thank you so much for having me. It's a pleasure to be here. Thank you. And uh, for the listening audience, so where did you go to medical school? UT Southwestern in Dallas, Texas. So I'm a Texas boy. Yeah. And where's your undergraduate degree? UT Austin. So I'm okay. a Longhorn. Okay, very good. Yeah. Okay, very good. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, so you're well trained, and but of course you're trained in. Uh, you're an allopathic physician. You're an Correct. MD. Right. And so really, y- you don't really didn't learn uh, too much nutrition in medical school. Uh, what about pr- about two hours worth? Which is really not too much. Yeah. So what prompted you to put out this uh, very. Uh, Fresh book on uh, wellness related to food. Well, well, the, the answer to that is is two part. First, what got me interested in supplements and nutrition, obviously, wasn't my medical education, right? As you just um, commented on. Instead, I had to teach myself, mm-hmm. and and the motivating factor for that, believe it or not, was my patients. I had more patients coming in asking me about nutrition, asking me questions about multivitamins, CoQ10, fish oil, and I just wasn't educated enough to answer their questions, and it was quite embarrassing, to be honest with you. So what motivated me initially, in a sense, were the consumers. But that's very nice to hear, That's that's, because some MDs, unfortunately, they have a certain arrogance. They say, if we don't know about it, it can't be important. It's nice to hear that you thought, oh, my goodness, my patients are asking me these questions. I really need to learn more. It seems like a nice thing. Well, it it will yeah. I thank you. I think so. You know, and I that I felt like I needed to understand more than just about drugs. So I, interestingly enough, I left my practice in Dallas and I went to South Florida and worked for a company called Life Extension, which is oh my goodness, yeah, they're very progressive. Oh yeah, Life Extension oh, is, is is there's a there's a nonprofit part of that which is the world's largest nonprofit health organization in the world, and and uh, I went there to learn. I answered telephone calls. I was actually a health advisor answering telephone uh, questions for a whole year. Oh my goodness, that's and, a nice thing And that's, that's where I learned about nutrition. Now my goal was to go back to Dallas after about a year and take what I learned and apply it to everyday practice, but uh, Life Extension wanted me to stay there as an educator. And now I'm the spokesperson for the, for the company and it's the best job ever. I love to educate. Oh, good for you. My job is to take all of the good information that we have out there on supplements, on nutrition, diet, and turn it into educational opportunities. If I could mention this, Life Extension has actually literally introduced I don't oh. know, melatonin they brought. I mean, you name it. They yeah. actually they actually made those products popular. Sure, sure. Melatonin, CoQ10. Most of the research on omega-3 oils uh, has come from you know either research we did or research we funded. Uh, the list goes on and on and on. Back in the mid-80s, we recommended a baby aspirin for people with heart issues. That's right. Uh, you guys really – We led the way you, on that. That's right. The yeah. thing about Life Extension is they're not doctrinaire. 
their attitude is, if this works Absolutely. and it's non-toxic, we use it. So they do supplements, they do medications. I kind of like that. That seems very balanced. It's that's the integrative approach where right. you integrate the east and the west. Right. You integrate whatever it is to help the individual, which it but that's an interesting lead in into the book because what we're realizing is a need today for personalized medicine, for yes. personalized nutrition, personalized supplementation. There's so many great options out there, especially when it comes to supplements. The issue is there's so many great options out there. Yes. <laughs> People are often confused. Right. Uh, and that's where I had the idea of uh, writing a book, coming up with a program where people could identify their issues, whether they, those issues be symptoms, diseases, risk factors, whatever that may be, right? Identify your major issues and then line them up with supplements based on research that could best help them. Hmm. I mean, that, that approach to me is, is that's using supplements to, to, to the greatest benefit, to, to the, in the best way. And that's why I wrote the Supplement Pyramid. It's a way to personalize that approach so you're not so confused. Well, that seems very important. So tell, tell my listening audience, just give a few things that you think most of us can need and why some might need, for example, on CoQ10, which right. is very important. So that would be to be personalized. If I, if someone of, say, your father's and my father's generation or mom's generation, you know, was, was ill, they would take more than we would take. Is that it? They would need a higher, potentially a higher potency? Well, you might. It, it depends really on your issues. That's the whole part of, personal, of personalizing it. So it's mm -hmm. not just even personalizing the nutrient itself. Maybe even the dose needs to be adjusted based on what you're going mm -hmm. through. Uh, let me give you a perfect example of that. We all should be taking omega-3 oils. Yes. Whether it's from fish or flax, I, I don't really care where you get them. Take your omega three oils. But excuse the, me, is fish oil a better choice than flax oil? You know, that, my opinion is yes. Yes. Okay, and and I, and there's reasons for that. Mm -hmm. Ultimately, fish oil is providing the longer chain omega threes, and those are the ones you really want. The longer chain ones, EPA, DHA, those are the fats that are good for your heart, mm -hmm. ease inflammation, good for your brain. When you take a plant based source of omega threes, you're getting the medium chain ones, and your body has to convert them into the longer ones. Now, if you're younger, that's okay. Your body can probably handle that. But as we get older, those kind of conversions simply don't happen uh, the way they should. So I, I do think fish is more important. However, I'm not going to fight you over it. If, right. <laughs> take your right. omega-3s. Right. Uh, now, the question becomes, well, what about dosing? Um, I, the dose is really anywhere between one to four grams. Well, it kind of depends on what you're trying to do with them. If, if it's just general health, one, maybe two grams a day of omega-3s. If you have any sort of brain disorder, heart disease, uh, chronic inflammation or chronic inflammatory disorders, you might want two to four grams. So that there's also some personalization mm -hmm. within the dosing of these key nutrients as well. So it's not just lining you up with the best supplements. It's also looking at what you're going through and what might be the best dose as well. And on the fish oils, I remember reading about a study uh, in Northern Europe, women who had postpartum depression. Mm -hmm. And they gave the women fish oils... I'm sorry. They had to eat cold water fish twice a week, and it brought and it rich in EPA, DHA, right. brought them out of depression. That's one of my favorite studies because it seems so subtle. You don't have to mess with them too so, much. It's, it's so it's simple, food, isn't it? Yeah. yeah, it's so simple. And, the, and of course, in that study, the key fat for that is the DHA. Mm -hmm. That's the omega-3 that has the best benefit in the brain. By the way, we are noticing many of our kids today very deficient in DHA. Really. Uh, and, and could that be a link or at least an associated risk factor for all of the ADHD that we're seeing today, uh, the autism so? that we're seeing today? So uh, I think you're going to see a push in the industry for uh, um, you know, manufacturing uh, children's omega-3s that are fortified higher in DHA. And why would children have that problem now? The processed foods. Processed food. we're eat, well, what we're eating today is a lot of omega-6s. That comes from the animal proteins, oh. the uh, the red meats, even the white meats. And that's really what our diet is. We're not getting near enough of, of as you mentioned before, the cold water fish, mm -hmm. uh, the seeds, the nuts, the greens. All of that has those omega oils that we need to get more. And the kids just aren't eating enough of that today. They're eating. I mean, our, yeah, we have generations who are now growing up on processed foods. I mean, that, that's all they're getting. So become deficient in DHA, and, and, we, and we wonder why there's issues with behavior, with autism, with ADHD. Uh, could it be s dietary? Is that, is that the driving factor? I, I sure think so. It really could be. Yeah. 
So fish oils is very important. And let's say you're going to, uh, one of my listeners today who never really taken any supplements at all, and they think, okay, I'll take one thing. Could they start with a fish oil and that would give them great benefit? Uh, absolutely. But I don't think I would start there. No. So if you look at my, the reason I picked a, a pyramid, um, if you think of a, an Egyptian pyramid, right? They've been around for four or 5,000 years, right? Well, they, they kind of represent stability, don't they, when you think of a pyramid? Yes. And one of the key reasons they are is they, ha- they, were, they were built with a solid foundation. Everything in life has to have a strong foundation, including your supplement regimen. So the supplement pyramid begins with base or foundational supplements that we all should be taking. And I believe the first one is a high-quality multivitamin. The basic vitamins and minerals, you know, I have, it's unfortunate, it, even at with Life Extension members, I have some people telling me, oh, I don't need a multivitamin, that's so passe, I, I, I'm going to I'm gonna get the latest Amazon herb that's $200 a month that I don't even right. know what it does, right? Right, right? No, 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 let's start with the basics. I don't know what that herb's going to do, but I do know what vitamin min- and minerals do for you. So let's Good start, yeah, let's start with an ideally dosed multivitamin, and notice I said ideally dosed. Most multivitamins on the market are based on the recommended daily intake, right, which is a dosing system that is completely outdated and archaic. If you want to prevent scurvy and rickets, take a generic multivitamin. Right. That's not what people want today. Right. We're talking about optimizing health. We're talking optimizing about optimizing health. Yeah, we're talking about using vitamins and minerals to actually treat disease, prevent disease. Right. That's going to take doses higher than the recommended daily intake. So I call it the ideal daily intake based on research. Uh, let me give you an example. Most multivitamins on the market, which is the core foundational supplement, right? Yes. Most of them, you know, with vitamin C might put 50 milligrams of vitamin C in their product. Why? Right. That's the RDI. Right. That prevents scurvy. Right. Well, that's really not our issue today. We're we're trying to do much more than prevent scurry. So the ideal daily dose, based on the research, so I went and I scared all the research studies on vitamin C, looking at immune strength, anti-cancer properties, heart, all of that, all of those kind of things. You're talking about a dosing of about four, uh, 500 milligrams to, to two grams a day of vitamin C. So somewhere within there, at least the, the, the beginning dose, in my opinion, for vitamin C should be about 500 milligrams, not 50. So that's an ideal dose for vitamin C if you want to go beyond preventing vitamin deficiencies. Well, so that sounds very prudent, 500 to 2,000. seems very prudent. Well, in that, well, you know, I do know it's prudent. You know why? Because I, it's in the research. The research shows it. The research shows that 500 milligrams a day of vitamin C starts to give you the heart benefit. Ah. About a gram a day starts giving you the immune benefit. Well, that's and that's far above 50 milligrams a day, which is just about scurvy. It so is. an ideal day, uh, ideal ideally dose multivitamin is where it begins. That's the first foundational product. Then number two, those are the omega uh, omega oils. Omega threes, uh, uh, anywhere between one to four grams, depending on what you're going through. But we all need to be doing those. The third foundational product that I think everybody should be doing uh-huh. is CoQ10. Ah, do you take CoQ10? I do actually. I yeah. find it's been good for my gums actually. Oh, you know what? If you have receding gums, yeah. you can open up the capsule or the soft gel, rub it on the gums directly. Yeah, I do that. It actually, my dentist, a hygienist, used to kind of give me a hard time, even though I was brushing and flossing. And I started using CoQ10. She said, oh, see that you're brushing and flossing now. And I said, no, no, I've always done that, but I'm not taking the CoQ10. <laughs> it, took about, it took about 16 weeks. Yeah. And the hygienist is a very tough person, my hygienist, and she was very impressed. Yeah. Well, it's very simple. CoQ10 is needed by every cell in your body to make energy. Without CoQ10, the cell energy pathways break down. The cell can't make energy. And if the cell can't make energy, it doesn't function properly. Ultimately, if cells don't function properly, guess who doesn't function properly? You and me. So CoQ10 is essential, not only to a longevity program, but just to preventing age-related disorders. Because inherent in all of them is this idea that the cells aren't functioning properly. Right. So CoQ10 is the third foundational product. And then the last... Excuse me, on CoQ10. Yeah. Now, there are several forms now. There's the new ubiquinol form. Correct, yep. And in your opinion, is that a more desirable form of CoQ10 oh, to by use. far, by far. Yeah, yeah. I don't even really talk about the ubiquinone. Uh, you know, there's a little joke that ubiquinone, it ends with N-O-N-E, none gets into your system. Oh, so really? you want to go it's with ubiquinol, well. all gets into your system. That's a way to remember it. Yeah, right. ubiquinol, it's, it ends with O-L. That's the form of CoQ10 you want to take. So as a scientist, down. you're really saying ubiquinol. Hands okay. down. Mm-hmm. I mean, there's... Tons of studies showing the benefit to um, you know your your blood levels with taking mm-hmm. the ubiquinol form. Now the last product, so there's four foundational products that make up that pyramid. The, sti- the, the, the it provides the stability for your regimen. The last product is probiotics. Yes, those are the healthy gut bacteria. You're only as healthy as your gut. Right. If you can't digest food, 
if you can't um, absorb those nutrients and eliminate waste, you're just not going to be very healthy. Right. Uh, and so probiotics support all those phases of digestion. And there's even new research showing that probiotics go beyond gut health. Immune strength. They they are, they're able to help decrease risk of autoimmune disorders. Yes. Uh, probiotics may actually protect your heart. So there's many other benefits, but but really it goes down to uh, supporting all phases of digestion. So ideally dose multivitamin, omega oils, CoQ10, and probiotics. Those are your four foundational products. Now that's not personalized yet. Those are essential nutrients that I believe everybody should be taking, and I am wow. convinced because I've seen this. I'm convinced. If we can get more and more people taking those four foundational products, we will significantly improve the health of this country. Significantly. I've seen it. Right. Well, that's uh – for those of you just uh, tuning in, we're speaking with Michael Smith, MD, who is a science advisor uh, for Life Extension. Is that the correct? Science advisor. Science I'm the advisor? senior health scientist. At senior Life health Extension. scientist yeah. at Life Extension, which is it has has a great track record of uh, doing some important things. Yeah. And uh, so, are you just in California once a year? Well, you know, I, basically, yeah, I come out for Expo West, um, but as a spokesman for the company, I do a lot of traveling, a lot of lectures. Uh, as I said, I have the best job. I get to teach. It's, it's the original concept of being a doctor, by the way, teaching, right? I don't think... Y yes, you're right. Yeah. Oh, and, and a recent report just came out that nurses, nurse practitioners, physician assistants do a far better job educating patients than the conventional mm -hmm. allopathic medical doctors, and I, trust me, I believe that. So at the foundation, I focus on taking all the good research that's going on in, in nutrition and supplements, and I just I turn them into educational opportunities. It's so much fun. Well, and it sounds important. Now, what about some things like, you know, milk thistle, dandelion tumor, things to help cleanse the liver, gallbladder, etc.? How do you how do you like those? Well, yeah, I do. And and that's where so if we move up the pyramid, so we just covered the foundational products in my supplement pyramid program, right? Let me have those once again. So that's going to be the ideally dose multivitamin. Right, multivitamin, yeah. Omega-3 oils, mm -hmm. 1 to 4 grams a day depending on your issues. All right. CoQ10, you big yes. one all CoQ10. I like about 200 milligrams a day. Mm -hmm. And then a high quality probiotic to support all phases of digestion. Mm -hmm. right? There's the that begins everything else you do is going to be based upon that foundation mm -hmm. now. Moving up the pyramid into the middle part, there's three levels. So this is the second level. This is where it's about personalization. So how do I know what you need? Right. How how do I figure that out? Well, I went back to my clinical days. If you came into my office as a patient and you came in complaining Less headaches or chest pain, whatever it was. You had a symptom or, or a complaint. Before I did any tests, before I took out my stethoscope, before I sent you into radiology, what you know, all those other tests. The first thing I did is I would sit down with you and I would ask you a series of questions. Right? That's called a clinical history. From that clinical history, the doctor is able to kind of paint a picture mm -hmm. of what might be going on. It's, it, that that history tells your story and helps the doctor decide what might be going on and what might be the best treatment for you. I did the same thing with the supplements. I figured if that works in conventional medicine, let's apply that also to taking supplements. So what I did for the middle part of the pyramid, which, which is going to help us identify your issues, is I created 16 health quizzes. Heart, brain, bone, joints, hormones, cancer, diabetes, they're all there. All these quizzes are there. These are, these are quizzes based on real clinical assessments. You simply answer yes or no. And I tally up a score for each quiz. Mm -hmm. That score reflects a certain amount of risk for developing a problem in that body part. Mm -hmm. The higher the score, the greater the risk. Once I have your score, I can now line you up with the supplements that I believe, based on research, have the best chance of helping you. So you really are targeting your issues and then targeting the supplements that really could help you. So you're taking the guesswork out of it, aren't you? You're get, we're getting the guidance that we finally need because we have all these choices out there. For That's you. the middle part of the pyramid. You make it seem as though it makes perfect sense. These all everything you say it makes perfect sense. I think so. I kind of wish I came up with this a long time ago, but I, you know, it, you know what? So what drove all this? The motivation for this book. When I was back on the phones with Life Extension, the most common question I would get from people: What do I need? What do I take? Right. Or, or the flip side of that is somebody would already be taking a product for a while, and they call me up: Why am I taking this? <laughs> I don't know why you're taking that. Let's talk. Let's take that history. That's what I did with the book, with the supplement pyramid. Is I took, I designed these quizzes so I can paint that picture. 
identify your issues, and then we can identify those supplements that are going to help you. There's a, now many things that many superfoods are popular now, and I think deservedly so. And what's your thinking about the uh, uh, herb? Uh, called maca. Are you a big fan? Yes. A, 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 that's interesting that you bring that up. I think maca has a lot of benefit, not just it. Traditionally, it's used in sex drive, libido, uh, but maca has been shown to balance hormones, mm -hmm. especially for women. And that's one of my quizzes. You can you can take the quiz. And if there's evidence of hormone imbalances, maca might be a suggestion for you based on how bad those imbalances are. Mm -hmm. So I do like maca. Maca, I think, is a uh, it, it's not just for women, by the right. way, it can be used by men, but it's I, I think has a lot of benefit in hormone balancing, which, which is important because hormones are the key messengers in your body. What that means is your brain talks to your body through hormones, mm -hmm. the messengers. So when your brain needs for you to do something, your heart rate needs to come up or needs to go down. Uh, inflammation needs to go up or come down. Whatever, that, whatever that, that command that the brain wants to get out to the body, it sends it through the hormones. As you get older, what happens to your hormones? Ooh, they drop off. Mm -hmm. Now your brain's lost the messenger. So there's a disconnect between the brain and the body. When that disconnect happens, that's aging. Mm -hmm. So mo things like maca, certain fibers called lignins, hops that they make beer out of, um, the hormones themselves, bioidentical hormones, will help to reestablish more youthful levels, rebalance hormones, and now your brain can talk to your body and you can live healthier longer. All right. Hormones are key. That, yeah. seems, that seems important. And also, I think mock has a nice taste. Has a nice taste. You ta I've only taken it in capsule form, so I've never tasted it in any other... Yeah, powder is like yeah. nice. Yeah. Now, vitamin D, yes. has, there's a lot of discussion about vitamin D. It should be. And much of the discussion is when the physicians do testing on the patients to see how much what their vitamin D levels are, almost all the patients test very low on vitamin D. Mm -hmm. What's your thinking? It's an epidemic in this country. Low Why? vitamin D is an epidemic. Why? Well, I think there's a couple of different reasons. I think one... Um, I think it depends on where you live, first of all. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you know this, but if you live above the 34th parallel, now if you picture, you got to picture a map of the United States, and picture where I went to school, Dallas, Texas, right. okay? I think most people can find Texas on a map, right? right? So kind of in the north part of Texas, you draw a straight line across east to west. That's the 34th parallel. Right. If you live above that line during the fall, during the winter, and even some of the spring, you make no vitamin D in your skin. Wow. Yeah, people don't understand that. You have to be below that 34th parallel to make vitamin D. So we're not making it naturally. As we get older, the, the enzymes required to make vitamin D break down and go away. So older Americans aren't making it. And then if you live above that 34th parallel, you're not making it anyway. So you combine all that together. We're using a lot of sunscreen, which is good and important, but that does block mm -hmm. some of the UVB that makes vitamin D. Um, and I think just also our poor diets in general, we're not getting vitamin D from good healthy foods. You could put all that together. We're deficient. And where do we get vitamin D in our foods from? Egg yolk and fish? Yeah, it's going to be in your dairy, but most there are some breads that are now fortified with uh, the grains oh. can be fortified with vitamin D, but mostly through your your fish, cod liver oil, for instance, is a great source of vitamin D, dairy. But unfortunately, that's not going to give you enough. No? Huh. The, the conventional doctors will tell you you need about 400 units a day of vitamin D, right, they do say that, which right. I think is way low. I think it's more around 2,000 units to 4,000 units a day of, of vitamin D. Based on your studies. Based on my studies. Again, it goes back to that ideal dosing, that ideal daily dose. I think it's around 2,000 to 4,000 units. You're not. You. That's a lot of dairy product. You're not. You're not going to be able Seems to get. Like and you're. And you're. And you're not going to be able to get that much from sunlight. Although when you're in the sun. It's during the summer. You, you can make a decent amount of vitamin D, but it takes a while to be out in the sun, and most people aren't, and we're slathering ourselves with, right. with oil. So we really do need to supplement. It's, it's so simple. You're talking eight cents a day. That one supplement alone could prevent just about uh, every age-related disorder. And, and so lack of vitamin D gives me, what does it do for me if I don't get enough vitamin D? Well, if you're talking about the true deficiency, you're talking about bone issues like rickets. But that's not really what we're talking about in oh, this country. Oh, that's right, vitamin D rickets. Yeah, yes. what, what we're talking about right. is, a, is, is really the term insufficiency, a vitamin D insufficiency. Uh, most people are around a blood level of, say, 20 to 40, which is, oh. a, which is in my opinion, insufficient or a deficient level. Uh, what you're talking about is you're, you no longer have a strong immune system. Oh. You're, lo you're losing all the benefits to, to your, all your cells in your body. As a matter of fact, vitamin D 
binds to every single type of cell in your body and has, has a role for every single type of cell. So if you're insufficient in vitamin D, every cell line could, could have issues. Hormones could have issues, the immune system, the heart, the brain. All of those things could have problems simply with low vitamin D. It's, right. it's critical. It's the key vitamin. And by the way, if you're, do, if you're following my pyramid, you should be getting around 1,000 to 2,000 units of vitamin D and an ideally dose multivitamin. That's why the multivitamin is so important. Uh, we're, we're chatting with Dr. Michael Smith. Oh, we're actually running out of time. Dr. Michael Smith, uh, where can I buy your new book, The Supplement Pyramid? It's very simple. Go to mysupplementpyramid.com. You can also take the test online. I have it right there. You can build your pyramid online, and you can check out the book there as well, mysupplementpyramid.com. Well, Dr. Michael Smith, it's been a great pleasure having you on Here's the Health. It's a great pleasure. I really have to invite you back. Please, let's do it. Uh, You're listening to Here's to Your Health on the LA Talk Live broadcast network. I'm your host, Joshua Lane. Thanks for tuning in. for tuning in to LA Talk Live, reality radio handcrafted for your listening pleasure. This is LA Talk Live, and we're more than just talk. Stay tuned.